How's it going, guys? This is Feeble Talk. We are on episode eight. I'm Jeff Zielinski, and our guest today is Colin Varniak. How are you guys doing? Let's, uh, let's see a little footage of Colin real quick. It's crazy to get to watch it Yeah, it's nice just to uh, get a glimpse of the visuals. A little, uh, you're welcome to the pro section. For oh, me. yeah, you smashed my head. At the time I hit in my head, it was actually. It's funny, like it was a try after I did it. Like I had already done the wall ride. Okay. And I went to go do a wall ride 180. I mean, no, I was trying to wall ride bar. And um, I guess like in the time, like I was super nervous to even do the wall ride again. And in that time, there's like a lot of like mist, you know, out okay. here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, slid off the wall, it wasn't too fun. That's terrible. Yeah, right when like the, that's the thing when the temperature changes, it just gets, it gets dangerous yeah. out there. Yeah, I wasn't even expecting it to. It wasn't even like I was so ready to get my pop and throw the bars. And like, once you're going that way, it's so hard to kind of get my feet back under me. I kind of just had to hold on. That's like the fiend rail. Yeah, that I know. Right? Rail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you and Garrett on that rail is crazy. The history on that one alone. Yeah, Garrett's done some wild moves on that thing. That one took a while. Yeah, I can imagine. This one. And he just dropped his hammer all of a sudden. This one, I actually did it the first time, and my, my back wheel touched the fence just the littlest bit. And I landed the 540 and I rolled out fine. And you couldn't really tell in the clip, but there was a little bit of uh, audio. You okay. know, you could tell in the audio. And I looked at Tony and Garrett, and I'm like, no, nah, you guys can't tell, right? Like, it's fine. You can just like, cut the audio out. And they just both looked at me and gave me the stare. Like, just didn't say anything. They didn't just, <laughs> I was so nervous about it, because obviously tagging your back wheel going that way with that kind of momentum, your fears flying backwards to your head, you yeah. know, and you're kind of going full speed. I don't normally go that fast, so that one was scary. And then you had that yeah. thought in your head going out the next time, probably? Yeah, this, the, the next time I kind of just knew what it was. I just gave it an extra crank and really pulled back off the lip to make sure I stayed away from it. It, it worked. That clip was insane. It's lucky. Um, but now we're back and we're on the green, so let's choose backgrounds. What should we do? Oh, <laughs> the tooth popover photo, man. <laughs> this is the first photo I ever shot with Z. Um, yeah, man, I was excited about this one. I didn't even know, I didn't even have it in mind or anything. Oh, what do we got? New York City. A little Hamilton sign. Little Ham oh, is that Hamilton? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do some digging for you. I, I was kind of. What did you guys find? This is all Hamilton, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was my. Kind of AMC struggling. 24, the New Jersey <laughs> Transit. That's New Jersey Transit. That's like a majority of my childhood spots. And the AMC 24. The AMC 24 has a bunch of curve ledges. <laughs> and it's got these like, uh, it's got curve ledges out front and it's got these curbs all around with planters that are like little transitions. So you can like go fast and do like bump jump hips and stuff. I used to ride that. We get kicked out all the time, but that is funny. The two of, two of the spots I used to ride are up there. That's funny. Coincidentally. And then a little throwback to your, your sunburn incident. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> we got to talk about this one. We had to postpone. Uh, I got I got fried and fried up in the mountains, man. <sighs> Worst thing I've ever had to deal with. What else do we have option wise? Your, your logo? Yeah, this one's awesome. I'm so excited about this. Evan Evan came up with this and like I kind of like met like didn't really know what I wanted originally and mm -hmm. I it, he had to come up with like two or three different things that he worked really hard on so I felt bad. But I think like he kind of understood at the end. I just wanted something simple and something cool and something symmetrical. And I don't know. He just nailed it. He, he did. Just, he's yeah. good for that, man. He's, he always comes through. It's crazy. And Blew then, me away. Uh, oh, and then. Vegetables eating healthy. <laughs> eating always, healthy. Always. Always. Yeah. Excited oh. to see this. It's funny because I've been working on this like recently this past week. Been working on the whole physical therapy and eating healthy again because it's hard when you travel. I'm sure you know. You've been yeah. traveling a lot. When you're on the road eating healthy, it becomes such a struggle. Your options are so limited, and especially like eating out at restaurants is restaurants you know, is tough. Yeah, it's you know you can't even ask. Do you guys use this or that, and they just look at you like you have three heads. I've done some extreme things over the years, yeah. to, but it's getting easier, thankfully. Uh, but uh, which which one do you uh, want to go with? I don't know. What do you What do you think is? Um. Well, the sun would look pretty easy behind us as far yeah, as... Yeah, the sun's nice. The sun, I like Maybe the, sun. the Hamilton one, just sun because the it's Hamilton like... Hamilton one, yeah, who's from Hamilton, right? The Fiend one's cool. Promote my logo. Let's go with the Fiend one. Yeah, I see the Fiend one. Yeah, I, like it with I feel the like it's background. the most BMX kind of one, yeah. so... Let's do it. 
That's right in the middle of us, so yep. it's not it's not too distracting, hovering over name, our heads dude. or anything. Yeah, that's the craziest part. I don't even know. Um, it's cool that this is up here now, so I can talk about this. I don't think people even, like when most people see this logo, they kind of don't even realize that it's my last name. Like, swirled. I don't even know if you know that, but that's my last name over and over and over and over again. You see, like, V-A-R-A-N-Y-A-K. I, I realized it, but I, I was also staring at the photo and, like, resizing it and cropping it to fit the window, yeah. so I probably... You probably saw zoned it, yeah. in on it, but yeah, yeah most, it, people it, have, most people have to point that out too, which I kind of like because they don't want it to look, you know, I don't know, it gives it kind of more of an organic feel, I think. No, I like it. I I totally get that. Um, actually, do you want to talk a little bit more about why well, we had to postpone the original shoot because of the the hell's itch? Yeah, the, the hell's itch. Um, oh, man, this is the worst thing. So I was snowboarding. I went up snowboarding in uh in Mammoth, which I just recently got a season pass. It was like had to do it living out here. I've always, I grew up snowboarding on the East Coast and like if anyone on, if anyone's watching, if you guys ever snow, have snowboarded anywhere, East Coast snowboarding, I mean Vermont's good, but where I grew up snowboarding was like the Poconos and these mountains are just all man-made snow, terrible snow and like that's all I knew. So I came out here and I went to Mammoth once and it was just game changing, you know, you're in a whole different ele elevation, a whole different atmosphere, but was it what I also didn't know is that when you're that high, you're a lot closer to the sun and uh, there's like two, bluebird days in a row which I guess no no clouds in the sky and I just got fried I didn't even realize I was getting sunburned the entire time I was kind of just enjoying my day and I got in the car I looked at my face like oh my god dude and I kind of felt it too but it turned out to be like full-on sun poisoning and I was like like just in bed for like a day or two sick and then the day before the interview and they said this is usually when it kicks in like 48 hours after the actual sunburn uh, I got this thing called Hell's Itch, which is like, it's a histamine response, your body's histamine response because it's processing the sunburn as like an allergic reaction. Okay. And because I was putting all this, these, this aloe lotion, this coconut oil on my face, I guess my pores were, were blocked up and these histamines, they, they can't release or whatever. I don't know the exact science behind it, but basically my, my face felt like it was on fire. I had like a million different fire ants just uh, eating my skin and I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even touch my face because it was so sensitive and the skin was flaking off and it was just a mess. And I kind of was at the point where I, I thought about coming in and sitting down and trying to talk in front of the camera for 45 minutes. And my lips too, they were all burned up too and like crackling. So it was almost like talking was like kind of hard, you know, uh, to even move my, and gnarly. I was like, you know what, this is not, I was like, I hate to even like have to cancel on like something so Minuscule. I don't. Whatever, man. I can't help it. I'm an idiot. No, uh, no. It sounds. I would have. I would have right away thrown a towel. I'm like, you know what, dude? I'm gonna terrible. postpone this one. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Kids, if you're watching this sunscreen, it's funny too because my mom <laughs> always tells me to put on sunscreen. But I never would have thought, you know, snowboarding. Is we were freezing. Like the funny thing is, is Ty got sunburn. He got like a sunburn too, but he didn't get it as bad because the second day he was wearing a mask and he wasn't wearing a mask to protect himself from the sun, but he was wearing a mask because that's how cold it was and we were just getting, you know, just from the wind hitting your face. It was, it was brutal. So it's, you know, I never would have thought in a million years I could have got fried up that way. It's live and learn, right? Yeah. Learn the hard way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I feel like you've been bouncing back and forth between uh, San Diego and East Jersey Coast, Coast, for a yeah, while. And the... then you're in Philly for a minute. Yeah. Are you officially living in San Diego now? Official San Diego, San Diego. Yeah, I guess I, I'll call myself a San Diego. Went home, came back I'm here, here for, for at least another year. I think I'm going to be here for a while longer, too. I really like it out here. Um, yeah, I just, um, tried, uh, tried moving back to the East Coast for a year. I'd moved out here originally just to kind of film for Fiending, the section you guys saw earlier. And, you know, I was out here for a year or two and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But at the time, Animal was kind of reviving their brand and I had been out here for a little while and I wanted to do the whole East Coast thing. I've always dreamed of living in Philly. Philly is... If you don't know, if you guys don't know, Philly is the city I grew up riding when I was a young kid. When I was in high school, I used to, uh, my parents would give me $3 for lunch every day, and I'd spend a dollar of it, and I'd save like $2 every day. So at the end of the day, I'd have, at the end of the week, I'd have $10, and I'd use okay. that $10, because there's <laughs> like, it's crazy, like where I'm at in Hamilton, you can take the river line, and it's a, it's a train from Trenton, takes you right to Camden, and it's like 75 cents for the train, something ridiculous, and you can hop on the subway from there, and head over to Philly and like that was the move. Once we discovered we can do that for mm -hmm. so cheap, it was like that's what me and my friends would do. And 
I mean, I wouldn't tell my parents, obviously, but like, yeah, you know, we're, we're just, I'm going to my friend's house, we're gonna paddle around the neighborhood, but there wasn't, there wasn't skate parks back then. Like, we didn't have a skate plaza, or there was one skate park in my town, no bikes allowed, and they were like, strictly enforcing it, so that was, I mean, you know, we can go to, you can go to Philly, you can ride FDR, and, and the street there obviously is insane, there's so much stuff to ride. That's when Love Park was going, and City Hall was going, you can spend, I mean, days, I mean, endless amount of time there. So much yeah. stuff to be done. Philly's the best. We, I remember we'd drive down from North Jersey, you know, once a month. You yeah. Know, the Philly missions. And I love the school lunch thing because I definitely buying bike parts when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, school yeah, lunch is like, yeah. you know, yeah, you got to hustle. Like you got to school, school yeah. time. Yeah. It's, I was just, it was hard, man. I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. And I'd get home and I'd just eat everything in the house, you know? <laughs> or sometimes I'd like pack things too to like keep me held over for the day. It was just such a like, my way of being like a little, like, you know, because I don't think I was like a bad kid, but I mean, everyone's got their little, yeah, little yeah, you know what I mean? Was, to me, it was like, I, I want to go, I want to see things, I want to travel, and like, Philly was another world for me. I had never seen anything like that. And if you've ever ridden a bike through a city, you know it's just a completely different experience than anything else. It's not like walking through the city, it's not like taking a car through the city, you're really engaged and you're seeing what's going on. So I, that was, I mean, that's, like it was the pinnacle of my childhood was going there. So I'd always wanted to live there, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of why I had moved back there originally. And I wanted to do the whole Philly thing. I, I, I tried it for a year and it was super cool, it was super fun. But as far as like having people to go out and ride with every day, a lot of people just have full-time jobs. Whereas out here in San Diego, there's a huge pro scene. So I have a, more than enough people to ride with every single day. There's always something happening and weather is just, it's brutal back there, man. I forgot. I got. Yeah. I was out here for two years, man. I was. Ah, yeah. I go back. I'll do it. It's not too bad. I'll just chill inside on those days. You know, it'll be nice. But yeah, the weather's uh, hard to beat, man. You really yeah, can. Yeah, it, it really is, man. It's. Um. So let's see. I lost my ch my spot here a little um, bit. Um. So, but back to Jersey a bit. So, I feel like a lot of people assume you're either from Philly or you're from Tom's River because you're yeah, associated with yeah. Garrett and everything. Um, yeah, but where I mean I know where you're from now. We talked about it, but do you want to talk about Hamilton a little bit? I mean, yeah, Hamilton is my hometown. It's right outside of Trenton, right outside of Princeton. It's kind of like right in between the two. Um, and it's just a small, random little town. Um, I mean, yeah, I grew up riding with. I, I actually grew up racing um, and like riding trails because there was a trail scene in right across the street from my house when I was like a little kid. Like, I, I don't think most people even know this, but my whole childhood has been riding bikes. It's like, I grew up where I grew up, there was fields across the street from my house, and like, kids built trails there when I was a little kid. When I was two, three years old, I'd just watch out the window all day, these kids ride bikes, <laughs> obsessively almost, you know? Yeah. And then like, all I wanted was a bike, I wanted a bike, and then I finally got one, and then when I was like three, I just like, wanted my training wheels off. I don't even know how I would even know that at three years old, but I knew that I didn't want them on my bike you, you anymore. Yeah. The big kids yeah them, and I just so. yeah and that was it too like I fell a few times and then I picked that up and that was like I remember that distinctly like taking off the training wheels and you know that was the first feeling of like being free on a bike and that was just I was hooked ever and since. Didn't you race BMX too? Yeah that's all the kids that built the trails talked to my dad and they're like you know you got to take them to the racetrack you got to take them to the racetrack and back then there was a lot of racetracks in the area there was Ben Salem in, yep. in Pennsylvania yep. and uh, New Jersey, Flemington, there was so many tracks that were close to me, uh, Mullica Hill, there was, it was crazy to think about all the tracks, and I, you know, my parents didn't even really know anything about it at the time, but they knew that I loved it, and they, like, supported me in it, which is probably the raddest thing I think a parent can do, you know, they were kind of like, this is, this kid loves doing this, he's obviously, like, not gonna let it go, Just support it. Um, and then you mentioned me, one of your earlier video influences will actually, uh, we'll just, we'll just play it right now, but, um, it's oh my sick, god, though. yeah, the 1201 video. It's so crazy watching this video again. I haven't seen it in so long because obviously I, I broke the VHS watching it so much. But this is all we would watch when we were, oh, I remember this. So, and it that was, was pretty sick. It was so cool because the, like we, uh, especially like the train footage, that was like all the kids back in the, this is all we would just try to mimic. And especially at the end of the day, end of the day train sessions at the trails. This is like early, early childhood for me. I love this video. I would just watch it and watch it and just dream of going to these jumps and jumping these jumps, you know, and it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty sick when a simple X up can be, can be slow mode. Yeah, and it's just like, 
you could just see the energy that the video had. You can see all these people hanging out. It's just such, so raw and so like BMX, you know? I don't know, everything about this, this is like, all I knew growing up. There's no. That looks really fun. Yeah, that's. This is all. This is. This is all. I'm. This is all. I, I would watch this video and I'd go ride the jumps across the street from my house. That's all I would do. And back then it was different too. Like there, was, there wasn't like phones or anything. So all the kids from that era that were building these jumps, like that was it, man. They were involved. They didn't have like a million toys and a million like now. I feel like there's such an over accessibility to like every type of like whether it be technology or whether it be like some form of entertainment, you know? But back then there wasn't much you can do, so that was like, if you rode BMX and you had this bike and you had a shovel, it was like, that's gold, man. Like, that's it, and that's what you did every day. And that was- Distraction free. Yeah, you, yeah, first thing in the morning, you'd wake up and it was just like eating breakfast. I can't wait to get to the jumps. I can't wait to get to the jumps and like, go out the front door and the kids are already, you know what I mean? They're, they're showing up and it's just like, that's it. And it's just all day riding, like we're all <laughs> in the dirt. It's, man, that's so much fun. Those like, are the solid days. So much fun, man. Um, well, obviously your riding has changed a lot since then. Yeah, um, a lot. What, uh, what was like um, a transitional period video? Like who was like the first like street rider that really influenced you? Well, I'd, I mean, Edwin had to be the original, I'd say. He was like the main, the main one in the beginning. I think when I saw the Can I Eat video when I was in high school at that time, um, I was kind of just, that's when I was kind of like quitting racing and starting mm -hmm. to ride. like freestyle I guess you can say because right. I never really rode like I didn't there wasn't a skate park near me so I didn't like have a skate park so I was always riding street and like street back then could be like a dirt hip that we made somewhere or found somewhere like that was you know what I mean or just something weird or something or like just manual pads or some, something just so like you know it wasn't like it is now where everyone has four pegs and a free coaster we could all jib around and stuff yeah. like you know bikes were so much different back then but yeah, I there were know. simpler times for sure. Yeah, yeah, so much simpler. But um, what was it about Edwin that really caught your eye? Because the whole video was pretty groundbreaking. It was just he made it look so good. Yeah, like, there's nothing else to say. Yeah, like I, I don't know, man. Saying. Like and it's and it's like that's really what made me want to ride street because I had I had obviously seen like like street, but to me like I had always been intrigued by like style and flow because I grew up racing, obviously. And the kids that were the smoothest on the track were the kids that were going the fastest and had the most. I, those are the people that you wanted to watch. They had style hitting the jumps and in the trail video, same kind of thing. So to see someone like have that type of style on street and be able to like, you know, I just remember him, like the one clip of him doing like the slow manual 180 bar and just the way he did it and popped it and like just made it all look so fluent to me. That was like, wow, like he can do like, you know what I mean? And it just kind of really opened my eyes to like what you can do on your bike, you know, in, in the street. Yeah, absolutely. He, he everything was just like, he's, he was just gifted. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, really like. So talented. Definitely, I met him when he was like 14, and he, yeah. right out of the gate, we were like, yo, this kid yeah. is just a natural, you yeah. know? Definitely knew what he was doing on his bike. And then um, as time progressed and you started around the street for a while, I mean, you mentioned you had another influence that was kind of like, yeah. The next level, uh, which is actually um, Davy Watson, yeah, we'll, we'll play Davy's part oh right now. Oh my God! Um, you, you mentioned uh, the part from Insight, which was nuts. I mean, it was. Yeah. Well, this was like this for me. Like what this video did for me, it was like you know, obviously the dude has an amazing style, and that's just a huge thing. You know, just being able to do a manual line and make it look good and make it look smooth. But he was like. Like a, like, I don't know, just felt like such a true four pegger, you know, yeah. with like all the regular and switch stuff he was doing. And it really, like, just like the way he was, because people were doing, you know, obviously people were doing regular and switch stuff before then, but just his fluency and the way he made it look, it really kind of like opened my eyes. To, 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 he's the reason I put four pegs on my bike, you know, this was back I, after I saw this part, it was it. It was a wrap. I was like, dude, I, I want to put four pegs on. I want to start grinding on both, especially this is one of my favorite clips. It is so raw. It just simple double peg grind, just yeah. made it look so smooth. Got the basketball jersey on. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah. That and like three pairs of shorts. Yep. Just <laughs> everything. Get the hoarder guest clip. Yeah, this part, this whole video. Yeah, is switch eyes, regular eyes. It's just uh, Bethlehem spots and Philly yep, spots yep, right there. Yeah, this is this is my area right here. This is a famous one. Yeah, he shut that thing down. Yeah, South Philly. It's crazy too because that rail is gnarly. Like it's to do this, this the manual to hangs is like 
Oh my god. It's a rough game. Yeah, Davey definitely had that amazing blend of, of tech skill and yeah. super burly too. He yeah. started riding Flatland, I guess, originally. Really? Yeah. That kind of makes sense with like a lot of the back wheel stuff he does. And, and he still rides now. Last I heard from Darren Reed, this is like a year ago though, he had no grips and I think he had no chain and he just rides Flatland. That's sick. And I mean, my bike's probably different by now, but that's what he was doing last I heard. Just, yeah, keeping it super Davy. That's I mean, that's yeah. sick. I, I'd love to see him ride again. That's like like I, I said, too. he was. I'm like I, anything, and then like I like I was so hooked on him. Any I'd watch anything and everything. I remember some. I think some kid made like a YouTube video of like all of his stuff compiled. It was like 15 minutes long. <laughs> I just watched hits. that. I watched that all the time, you know. And it's like, just yeah, that was. Yeah, he's the reason I put four pegs on. That's awesome. <laughs> So uh, fast forwarding a little bit, um, what about, I mean, nowadays there's seriously so much incredible riding coming out every day. It's yeah. hard to even keep tabs on all of it. Like yeah. there are certain days of the week where I have to just like, be like I need to catch up. Yeah, you me know? too. Me too. I'll just be at the computer. I'm like, oh, dude, I missed so many videos this week. It's, it's insane how much comes out every day. Yeah. Uh, but what's like one thing that came out recently that really stood out to you? Man, I gotta say, Augie, Augie's trip part, man. There's nothing I haven't seen, like, for me personally, like, I've known Augie a really long time, and, like, I just to see someone, to see, like, my friend, and just anyone in general be, like, he has no reason to do it other than his love to do it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, he's not, like, at the time, like, I mean, now he's on Fiend, obviously, which is obviously, I, I think, one of the most amazing things. It's so cool to have him be a part of the timing. squad. It's yeah, great. yeah. So, but at the time, like, he didn't have anything, you know? He quit Stranger, he wasn't doing it, and it wasn't, he wasn't trying to get, he didn't know, like, it wasn't like, hey, put out this part, Fiend's going to put you or anything like that. He just did it because he loves BMX, and he wanted right. to do, he wanted to put out a sick part for Trip, he wanted to put out a sick part for Ty, and he loves riding, he wanted to put out a sick part for himself, you mm -hmm. know? And, like, he went in. Like, yeah, he, he did, went. Yeah. Let's, uh, in. let's queue up that video too. It's Here crazy. he go. I watch he his part. I'm just boss, like, man. yeah. And the craziest part is you ride with him, and it's like he's not. He's just not scared. You know, he he gets it. He he gets into it. And he knows what he's gonna do. He kisses to God and he goes at it. And it's it's insane, man. It's it's really really motivational. I'll be looking at a 10 stair rail, scared to do oh, the simplest tricks, dude. and he'll he'll roll up to a 20 stair and all right. In my experience, as far as like shooting photos goes, he he does not take run-ups. No. Nah. He's like once you know it takes a while to set everything up. We got the three flashes set up, and he's like, "You ready? You ready?" And he just goes. But yeah. Have one, yeah. Like, it's wow. almost like he knows, you know, cause he he knows what he's doing, and he knows he's calculated, and he knows that the long longer you wait, the more that fear kind of sets in. But it doesn't. I mean, it's just it's such a hard thing to do. Like this line is insane. How yeah. many people have done tri <laughs> how many people have done tricks over that rail, and like. He's super manned over it, which is one, a really risky trick. If your back end drops and you oh hit the rail, God. you're done. You, you know feed what I mean? off the yeah. back end. Oh, yeah, God, you're, you're, you're just going to get mangled. And he, he put it in a line. I've never even seen anyone grind that other I mean, Maybe it was an escape video or something like that. But just, yeah, I don't know, man. Augie blew my mind away with that part. It's just, it's sick to see, you know? It's sick to see someone just put their all into something for the love of it. You know, because I feel like that's all, like, for me growing up, that's what BMX was. It was never anything else, you know. Either. Well, that's true. And speaking about Augie and, like, for the love of it, I mean, I think it was, like, 2010 when I first met you at the Hell House. Yeah. And at that point, um, yeah. Garrett and Augie lived there. Yeah. And you didn't live there, but there, I went there to do a little article, and they're like, oh, you got to, well, you know, uh, just do a call, and he doesn't, he doesn't live here, but he should be in it because he basically crashes on the couch for weeks at a time. He's like, dude, and you know, and the next day you showed up and we shot yeah. that uh, the Hangar Popro photo, which we'll just show the full frame one real quick. And at the time, people were just starting to do the Hangar Popovers, and you doing one over the L on like a pretty legit setup. At, my, at that time, that was like the best one I'd seen someone do. Yeah, it's, cra then, it's crazy because I didn't even ha like I didn't have it in mind or anything like that. It kind of was just. You know, Garrett hit me up like he always does. Like, yeah, Yo, you want to come down and ride? And that, at that time, I really that it was sick. They kind of like adopted me almost. I I, I guess you should say, you know, like mm -hmm. everyone kind of like I fell into that group of friends at a, at a, when I was at a time in my life where I didn't really have anyone to ride with. You know, I was I think I was like a senior in high school. All my friends had kind of stopped riding. And I was pretty much like I had like such a chill schedule my senior year. I'd, I'd leave school and I'd just go ride the local park 
the one that was skate only at that time they weren't checking anymore and okay. i think they didn't start checking till like three so i just go ride that by myself every day you know just because i loved riding but um yeah i ended up meeting one of garrett's friends carter uh at the skate park and he had seen um like a video that i had filmed at the time i had put out for uh it was like for like I, I just put it on it was like the first edit i ever made i had a few different people film it and i actually chopped it together and edited it and i sent it to like ride to come up and vital and like, everyone kind of posted it which I, at the time i was super psyched on and the kid carter saw it was like yo like you, i don't even know you ride street i see it at the skate park all the time like you're like we're gonna go ride trenton like this weekend you should come ride with us and that was the first time i had met that whole crew i had met garrett and everyone and like chris marshall and and uh, I think like the beginning of the day we started out riding Trenton and I didn't even really talk to Garrett for like the first <laughs> half of the day because Garrett's quiet and I was like, oh, I, I was kind of quiet too. I was intimidated by the whole situation. I had known who, like I had known Garrett at the time, like kind of just from watching videos online and, and seeing that he was like doing stuff and just Marshall was the first, like, like anyone I've ever seen shoot with flashes. Like, I've never even been around that kind of, that kind of thing. So I was kind of like, didn't really talk too much in the beginning, but then we kind of just got to riding and, and got to talking and we, we like kind of hit it off right away. And we're just like, this is crazy. You know, this kid's just like me, like riding just like I do. And then like, he invited me over his house the next day. I was like, Hey, you want to come ride my ramps? And I think I had like, I like, he had spring break, but I didn't, but I just kind of like, I had work at the time. I was like, I'm just taking off work. I'm going to go, you know, like, yeah. I had always seen his ramps. I like, he had, they had the Thanksgiving jams back then. I'm sure you guys remember. If you don't remember, it was a long time ago, but not sick. yet, yeah. Nike, yeah. Nike did the Thanksgiving jams at his house. His ramps, like Wessel came out and built them, and it just looked insane. I always wanted to go there and ride these ramps, and hear the kids hit me up like, "Hey, come ride my ramps!" And yeah, you know, I was there. I rode his ramps that day, and from there on out, it was just like, we we're just that was it. So, um, like for instance, like as a reference point, so that photo was 2010. Uh, when did Deadline come into the picture? That like deadline was always a weird thing because it was kind of like Garrett always had like was like yo I'm gonna film a video but like we didn't even have like a computer at the time he kind of just had a camera and we were just filming and like <laughs> we weren't even capturing footage you know so we kind of always talked about it and then it just slowly evolved into like he told people he was gonna make a video so mm -hmm. it was like oh well now he's making a video and he's taking a while and then like Ty came into the picture and it just kind of like really turned into like yo we're like really making a video and it kind of just grew and became, you know what I mean, over the years, I think like a lot of people think it, I mean, a lot of Garrett's footage was really old in that video, so I it was definitely like a long time, in, a long time filming, you know, but. Four or five years, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, but I think the organization of it is really what, what took so long, you know, and like Tony didn't really come into the picture till the end to kind of put everything together and edit everything, so, and that was hard for him too, having to come in and like, you know, things are easy now, you just drag and drop clips, but back then it was just tapes of uncaptured footage. Oh my gosh, We had hours. to kind of, yeah, we just had to try to find stuff and recover stuff and, get, and salvage what we can and get some timelines together, but he killed it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. Um, and I feel like Deadline, correct me wrong, that video pretty much like put you on the map, so to speak. Uh, that's sick to hear because I was super bummed out on my part at the time. Um, I don't even know if anyone really knows this or not, but I had like torn my ACL for the last like year of filming. So I wasn't really able, I think the newest clip I had was like, I did like a back ice 180, manual 180, and I had a free coaster on. And that was like the newest clip I had filmed. But before that, like every clip was over 12, over 12 months old because I'd like blown out my ACL. But I mean, I guess I, we had been filming for so long that I had all this footage, yeah, you know, like I didn't yeah. even know. I didn't, it was cool to actually see my part and be like, wow, I actually have a part. Cause I didn't even remember half the stuff that I had filmed. Cause it's just crazy. been, it's yeah. That long just a mix and like like I said things weren't as easily easily accessible back then so I couldn't watch the footage we didn't have the footage on a card on a drive or anything like that it was kind of just Tony trying to find stuff and get them on and get, get it on something so it wasn't so much like nowadays I feel like um riders are like once they get you know 12 clips in the can they already start building a timeline and then they get to the yeah. point I know like time and people was like I have Two spots, you know, these two little black spots. Yeah, and yeah. Get, and and yeah, he's like lot. super specific. Yeah, he he's really, those. he's really yeah. specific. But I mean, well, look at what he puts out. So yeah, it's of like, course. You know, it's, it's like he, worth it. <laughs> he knows. He he's, he knows. Um, yeah, I don't like for me. I've never really done that with a video. It's crazy to say. I've never really had. Except, I guess my the, my first animal part. I had filmed everything, and then like the last clip was the only clip that I went to go to get back. But other than that, aside from that, it, it's pretty much been like. 
kind of just like the animal projects, all that is super, like the way those, those projects came together was just being out in the city filming and the Vaz had a timeline, put it together and you know, it was just more or less like that. But I think now with things getting easier and people being able to view their footage easier, it's a lot easier for the rider to be involved in the editing process and, and seeing kind of where their clips are placed and what they want to get, how they want to like shape their part. So I think it's it's cool in that aspect, you know, it's a lot easier. I think riders nowadays are definitely way more hands-on and, and aware. Yeah. I think back in the day, they just didn't really think about it. They're like, well, I ride and you you do this stuff. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. funny because we were talking about Davey. I remember at the end of Insight, Davey being like, talking about like stress of film. He's like, oh, you just, like go out, ride, film, whatever, you know, get clips, it's whatever. It's not like, oh, I got to do this or anything. And that's kind of like, I, I kind of try to like have, I try to always remember that and try to keep that in mind with me because I never want it to be like, I mean, there, I know there's a lot of people that have like certain set tricks they want to go get or they want to go. And I mean, I, I, I like, I definitely do like to do that. And I, I like there's certain things I definitely want to get, but I don't know, there's something about just being out and riding and, and like when things kind of just happen naturally when you're cruising through a city or yeah. you're just exploring and it just, it happens on its own. I always, I always like those type of clips better. I'm always way more hyped on those when you find just a random weird setup or something that just catches your eye and it's more or less about the spot and the look of what you're doing. And, you know, I, I think that's as I get older too. When I was younger, I was a lot more like trick focused, I guess you can say, and just like, want to be like dialed in that aspect. But as I get older, I start to see like the appreciation for spots. And even as I've started to do more filming, just the appreciation of like, how a certain spot can look, you know, mm -hmm. like it's, it's the color of a rail or just yeah. like the background or where you're filming something. It's like you can look at it if it's if it looks spectacular on footage. You don't, you know what I mean. You can you see the spot and it's almost like now I'll see the spot. I, I got to get something on it just because of how cool it looks. You know, where this is saying all that is gonna make you miss Philly. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is so funny you say that, man. And I do, I really do. That's that's the hardest part about living out here. You know, when it when it comes to spots, I love it out here. I definitely love it. I love riding all the spots, but there's nothing like East Coast spots. Nothing. There's nothing. It's just there's it's just something about I don't know whether it's just the time it was built, the architecture, and just it just being like what it is. I don't know. It's just there's nothing else like it. It's just there's so much more unique. There's definitely a really emphasis, big emphasis on schoolyards out here too. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like and schoolyards are cool, but it's just you always get you you know you're gonna get a legend, you know you're gonna get a rail. They're like cool. they're, yeah. tri they're trick training grounds in a way. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. like they're perfect spots. Yeah. So you have to do next level tricks yeah yeah which like, is like sometimes to me it's i mean it's fun i like to, i like to get you know i get a you have that so it makes it's good for you for yeah sure. <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's fun but it's but at the end of the day like i hate it you know like <laughs> i don't like you're sitting there battling a trick that's just so hard because it's you know and i mean that's that's it's part of it it's fun it's what makes it rewarding at the end but it's i'd rather battle a setup that's just hard to figure out you know and just you come out victorious on that it feels such a better feeling you know i think i feel like for me, I street riding is really all about it's like applying your your vision and your tricks to like the surroundings. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, there is so much of a creative aspect and I think that's kind of what drew me into street riding too is that it's like it's a whole nother it's a whole nother vision. You know, people you try to explain it to people and they don't really understand it. I think like the monster video did a really good they did a really good job of trying to portray that, you know, they the did. But, the above yeah. below and they really they talked about Rich did an amazing job with that. Um, just talking about you know the, the visuals that you see when you're out riding and how you're looking at the world and just to kind of to have something that opens your eyes and be able to see see things a little bit differently. I don't know. It's just it's pretty cool. I think. I always there's that joke when like we'll be out somewhere and we go to a spot and everyone's like looking at the rail and using their hands and like doing these weird things and, I, and it's like I wonder what everyone driving by is thinking right yeah, now. Exactly, All these yeah, exactly. These guys like, are standing yeah. around a rail and touching it. Yeah, just it looking at this rail, like doing this like, weird what stuff. What is wrong with these people? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they have no idea what, what's going on. Yeah, but. especially when you don't have the bikes. Like if you're with a crew of dudes, they get out and pro walk. You do the, the pro spot. It's like, <laughs> what are these like? The like, crew of dudes just hopped out of the van. They're looking. Why is this band looking at a rail? Yeah, no, not yeah, a band. exactly. And, yeah. Um, but I want to talk more about um, street spots and setups later, but. Um, Digressing a little bit. Uh, so was Fiend your first sponsor? Fiend was not my first sponsor, okay. actually. Um, I did this this contest. It was called uh, Gear for a Year. I don't know if you guys remember it or not, but like Escamilla was involved and Tony Hawk was involved at the time. And it was like basically a video contest that they did. And like the winner of the video contest like got flowed from a handful of sponsors for a year. Okay. Um, 
United being one of them and Etnies being one of them. Which oh, nice. Which is, okay. is sick because that's how, like, you know, that's how I got the plug from Etnies and I've been getting shoes ever since, which is, you know, that's sick. Um, um, and, like, United at the time was, like, you know, that was, like, a dream sponsor of mine. And actually, when Garrett was starting Fiend, um, Ian had hit me up. I think it was, like, Ian and Dean at the time, and they were... They were trying to send me out. Nathan was living in California at the time, and this was right before Garrett started Fiend. And they were like, they kind of wanted me to to fly out and hang out with Nathan and just like ride and film and just, I think more or less like see how things worked, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of yeah. like a really hard decision for me at the time to figure out what to do because it was a huge opportunity, and that was way it was such a long time ago. You know, this was before Deadline, before all of that. You know, okay. Um, and. Uh, yeah, it was so hard for me to, like, have to tell them. You know, I, like, I didn't know what to They're, like, we're trying to book this ticket, and I'm, like, freaking out because Garrett is kind of telling me he's going to do this, and if you ever met Garrett, you know, he's real lax. It is cool about everything, you know? He's <laughs> totally. like, yeah, dude, like, now we're doing it. And I'm like, well, dude, like, I don't know. This is, like, a pretty big opportunity. I don't really, you know, but, like, if you're starting a company, obviously I I got your back. I want to, you know what I mean? I want to be involved. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, no, then, you know, I was, I, I, I had to tell them. I was and do the whole thing with Fiend, you know, I, and I couldn't, the hardest part is I couldn't even, at the time, Fiend was still happening, so I had to tell them why I couldn't have my ticket. I'm like, yo, listen, like, this is what's happening. Like, I can't tell you guys what's going on. I think they kind of already knew what happened, what was going on, too, because, like, they said when it happened, like, oh, we, we already kind of had a feeling that's what was happening, that Garrett was starting his own company, because it had yeah. been rumored at the time, you know, but it was just one of those things where Garrett didn't want anyone to know, so I couldn't tell them. So it's kind of like hard for me. Like I have to explain. Like I'm like here. I'm like turning down this opportunity, and I, yeah. I can't even tell them why. You know, it was, it was a little stressful for sure. But obviously, I'm glad of the way it, it turned out. You know, I did the whole thing with, with Fiend and with Garrett, and it's just like, it's cool to be a part of something from the start. Definitely. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm sure, uh, Ian and Dean, they they could read between the lines, and I'm sure they pieced they, it together. Yeah, they knew. Know? They were and they were super cool and super nice about everything, which is like, a, relieving. You know. Um, do you, now that you're, obviously you've, you've been friends with Gary for years, but now that he's like, you know, the face of Fiend, it's like his, like his company, does it feel weird? And do you ever have any pressure like riding for him? And especially since he's like the greatest rider on earth, like, is it ever like, or do you even think about it that way? Nah, it's, it's never, it's never really like all the pressure in BMX that I feel comes from myself. Like, okay. You know what I mean? I. You can't blame anyone else for that kind of that kind of stuff, you know. I like mm -hmm. like gotten older, I've learned to realize that it's always in your own head. But Garrett, as far as like pressure is concerned, he's he's never put any type of pressure on anyone really to do anything. It's like he's kind of been pretty chill back, kind of doing his own thing. And if anything, it's been more or less like having him as a as like a boss and a team manager. It's it's more like he's understanding I think than a lot of like company owners would be about things you know because it's, yeah I'm it's sure. like it's, <laughs> it's hard being a rider and I think sometimes there's a lot of things that like people don't understand and how much you you kind of have to put in the riding and how much you put your body through and it's, it's sometimes it's not easy to do you know what I mean to do things or get things done or get things done in a timely manner you know mm -hmm. it's like whereas like I think a lot of companies are like we, we want this now you know it's like well it's not done, you know. It's yeah. like I'm working on this part. We got kicked out. He's like he, he'll, he'll kind of, you know. It's it's cool to have someone that's goes through the struggle and knows what it is versus someone that's kind of disconnected and just wants content or wants something that's, you know, what I mean, unrealistic. So I, I think it's cool. No, that sounds perfect. It definitely. Um, speaking about Fiend and projects, are you working on a video for Fiend right now? Yeah, I'm working on a little something with Tony. Um, we got some footage going. Garrett's got some clips. Uh, Reiki's has got some clips. Um, I think JJ and, and I don't think Ty just got done. <laughs> Ty, yeah. but Ty's yeah, been Ty's out. busy. So, yeah, Ty's <laughs> been putting putting work in lately. Yeah. He's been putting a lot of stuff out. But the plan. He, he, he had a year. <laughs> he had a year, and he definitely had a year. So he. So I think the plan is now we're gonna try to get everyone together. And like I, I, I had some clips I've been filming with Tony for for a little while now, and we're just gonna try to put something out, do something cool with with Fiends. So we're kind of just. Just slowly working, you know, it's never like, all right, this is, you know, it's kind of just, all right, we're going out, it's a weekend. We try Thanks, to on clips. Garrett time, like, yeah. like a day school. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, but like you said, it's, you, you can't rush it. You, yeah, there's you, so you, many you can't, variables yeah. that go into getting clips nowadays. It's like, yeah, there is, there is, there really is. And it's like, you can go out and you can get five clips in a day or six clips in a day. And you go out for two weeks and not get one clip. It's just how it'll work, you yeah, know, it's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, 
And uh, how did you end up an animal? I know at the time there was uh, other brands approaching you, and I think Ralph actually ended up like driving down to your house to talk to you to like keep you with the brand. Like, do you want to, um, you know, touch upon that a little bit? Um, or yeah, just about yeah, the yeah. animal in general? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they like I first got put on to Animal. Um, it was when deadline, the year deadline won the Nora Cup when it just came out. They actually at Nora Cup, they like, they came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be a part and everything That's and sick. start getting hooked up. Yeah, so it was sick. It was Big like, night. yeah, it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. You know, obviously it's a company I've, there's any other company that I'd want, there's no other company I'd ever want to ride for as far as like parts companies come. That's the company I've idolized as a kid, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, that's that's like, I, they, they started hooking me up, but at the time, like, the brand was kind of in the hole and like, I couldn't even really get parts. Like it was, it was a mess, you know? And it was in dark times. Yeah, sure. yeah. So I was on there for, for a while. Um, and then I had put out, like, I think it was after I had put out my Fiend section and things kind of were just like getting worse at Animal, I guess you could mm -hmm. say for a while. And it was, it was pretty like, it was pretty much like, and Ralph, like, the G is kept me kept me pretty like was pretty honest about what was happening and let me know you know and he, he kind of like really like saw me as part of the brand he wanted me to be a part of the brand he really like you know we had obviously talked about a lot of things before and he we saw eye to eye on a lot of things and um, yeah I had some I had some other offers at the time from other other sponsorships and it kind of was like it, it got it got down to the wire I'm not gonna lie man it was it was one of those things where it was it was like a the day of, I was gonna like another company was gonna announce that I was gonna be riding for them, and I and Ralph knew about this the whole time. Like right. he was cool with it. He was like, you know, like I can't like, because the company he couldn't do anything. He's like, yo, I can't do anything. I, I get it, you know, I get it. You have these other opportunities, and like I don't want to hold you back from that, you know. And then like the day before, he called me. And he's like, like I got, like you gotta trust me. You gotta trust me. Like I got something. Like I got it figured out. It's gonna work. And it was just like, oh my god, are you kidding me? You know, like this is crazy. <laughs> I don't like. I don't want to seem like so like you know like disloyal to to or like I'm like kind of like jerking these brands around anything like that you know I, I wasn't trying to to come off you know like I was trying to like get the most out of it wasn't even that type of situation it was Not more or less somebody yeah. else was offering me like an opportunity to travel and to do things and and some money and it was like all right well am I gonna do this or am I gonna stay with Ralph who's just telling me in my face that you know like it's, it's a wrap you know it kind of was like that was the decision, but he, he called me and, and because he had made those efforts, because he had like came and, and, and talked to me so many times and he was like really reaching out to me and trying mm -hmm. to like keep me involved in the brand and like really like had so much faith in me. And like, I obviously had so much faith in Animal that it was like, you know what? All right, that's it. You know, like I'm going to do it. I'm going to. And then for me, it was like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to do what I can to, to wrap the brand. And then like, you know, he they stayed true to his word and like things started happening and we had the opportunity to film the animal house and that was like you know and things started working again you know we got things the ball got rolling again and I, man i'm so happy that everything worked out the way it did you know yeah, at the it time really it's so crazy so so stressful but man it's cool it's cool to be involved with a company like animal and be a part of the brand and yeah and uh animal house it was definitely like they're like the that moment in time like the rebirth yeah. of the brand yeah um, and it just seemed like a pretty incredible experience because you had like a bunch of the newer animal team dudes and a bunch yeah. of the OG, OG guys all coming through at the same time. Like the for you, was, like what was that experience like? That house like? was just surreal. I just tried to like chill, hang out, and just take it all in. It was so much <laughs> to take in, man. Just yeah. hanging out with everyone. Like, I mean, not to like fan out on those dudes, but you know, like I've been looking up to all of them, you know, from. Grala, Hoder, Edwin, like, and just, I'm hanging out with them, you know, even just going to the shop and, you know what I mean, yeah. hanging out with Roan, I'm like, dude, this is, you know, it's crazy, like, Roan built me up some wheels, you know, I'm like, this is like, like, I like just hanging out with all those dudes and being involved with all those dudes was, it was super cool and like, they held it down, you know, I could, like, if it wasn't for Gr Grala, especially showing the crew yeah. around and bringing us to spots, like, he really held it down. In New like, York. Yeah, he did. He 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 held it down, and him and Navaz, you know, he was out every day, just and that was like it was crazy because it was everyone was getting clips and everything was happening, but everyone was just kind of psyched that like something was happening again, so it was all oh, yeah. natural. It was never forced. No one right. was out. It was just we were out like 10, 12 hours a day. Some days it was ridiculous how many like 
you know, you get out at 10 and we were out until one in the morning, just, just not, just keep going, just getting like, Nat Miller at the time was working, so he was riding, he was like night sessions, you know, and like, some of the days I would just stick with Navaz and be like, we're hanging out today, you know, he was on double duty some days to where he would just all morning and then out at night with Maddie and I'd kind of just try to stay, hang out, whatever, and, and I mean, hold in as long as I could and be out for the majority of the time that I could be, but it was a month straight of just good weather, amazing tour guide, great filmer, and just like everything kind of working out. We didn't really have too many problems with spots. We didn't have any too many issues. It's kind of like smooth sailing for the most part. All in New York City, like what more could you ask for? Yeah, no, man, it's <laughs> like, I don't, to, to recreate that experience, with, I mean, Lacey came in and was kicking it. That was, you know what I mean? It was like, it was crazy just to have, everyone was there too. And especially on the weekends when like, all like, you know, I mean, Animal hooks up so many people and everyone, yeah. everyone was just rolling through, you know? And it was just, it was one of those things where it was like, I don't even know how we got away with it. I mean, there was, we had so many people, <laughs> had so many, so many spots, we had so many people, we were rolling so deep. But I mean, a lot of the spots in New York City, you kind of need a crew to roll through, you know, especially yeah. when you get into the areas that are not as nice. You don't want to yeah, be there with like sure. three or four people and some nice cameras. You want to have a squad, so it worked out. Who, uh, for you, like, who was the standout video section in that? Just Gorala. I'd have yeah. to say Gorala. This just, I mean, I'm all, I've always been such a fan of Gorala's riding and like, Navaz is, oh, I've always been a fan of his filming and I feel like he just, they just, I don't know, everything about that part was just, it really encaptured Gorala's riding, his style of riding and how he likes to ride. And I think it's hard to do that, you know, because mm -hmm. he don't, like, he doesn't ride like everyone else rides and you need, like, you know, like he's not, like, he's not doing tricks. The way Gorala, like Gorala rides the city, like he is just on the move, like he rides yeah. fast, you know, he rides like, with some tire pressure, it's scary. you know, he's moving. Like I couldn't even, I remember at the house, there's like this footage that Navaz has of like, he like, he comes up the hill, like they're cruising, you know, and like Navaz films him coming up. And then like, you see me like staggering in the back, just gasping for air, like, ah. <laughs> like just like trying to keep up with him. Cause that's, and that's how he moves, he moves to the city and he hits things and he's just hitting stuff, finding stuff, finding different spots. And like, it's, it's really hard, I feel like, for a filmer to kind of capture that. I think Navaz did a good job of showing him, like, just kind of moving and being active in, in the city. It just had a good feel to it. I think Navaz, uh, as a rider, really appreciates Gralo's style. And, um, you know, obviously, there's, you know, yeah, so much to and appreciate. And stuff. Yeah. Like, I think he's a, he's legitimately a fan of Gralo, so he yeah he definitely, I think he was filming Mark as, as, how, he, as how he pictures him, you know? Yeah. So it came out really yeah. authentic. Yeah. Um, Navas is great for that though. He definitely yeah. when he puts his touch on something, it's yeah, it's always on heavy point. Arm, man, he kills it. Um, let's talk about your ender, the uh, the feeble 180. Feeble 180 backwards double. Yeah, yeah, that was like that was just like only. I mean, the whole video is incredible, and there's so much about it. But that was just like the top of conversation. Um, they, let's start, to let's let's run it up yeah. again real quick. When that came out, like I just remember everyone like. So yeah, just you want to talk about it a little bit? Like, was this, was um, it? Did you have the trick idea first, or did the spot dictate it? Or nah, spot totally dictated the trick. To be <laughs> honest, man, like never even thought of like a trick like that. But it was, it was. Uh, I had a part, you know, and it was, it was dialed. But I just, you know, you need like I, and like it was just one of those things. I needed one more clip. I needed a banger. I didn't have a banger. I, I, I feel felt like there's like so many things in there. My part, yeah, but it just I need. I wanted like I had I had all this footage and I had so much really good stuff, but I just wanted that one thing that was like, all right, this is gonna make it like stand out. You know, this is really gonna like. And I'm like in my head trying to think of all these different spots, like what I can ride, and I wanted to get something in Trenton. Just as just as, as I've grown up riding, kind of grew up riding Trenton, and there's so many spots that are overlooked in that area, and that rail spot in particular was one I had always thought about doing something with the parallel rails because they're mm -hmm. extremely close. They're a little tall, so it's like, there is like the sack factor, which mm -hmm. I ended up kind of having one of the clips I ended up like landing on it and stacking it. It's pretty, pretty brutal, but the rails being that close together and then being square, like kind of just, I knew I need, I wanted to do something, something on them. Mm -hmm. And then I just started thinking about that spot. I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. Like, what can I do? What can I do? And then like, I just, just thought like, you know, I, I thought about it in my head and I was like, maybe that would work, you know, because I've done like feeble 180s and like popped off like pretty hard and like I felt that momentum, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, but I'm like, ah, oh, there's the same height. I don't know if like I'll be able to keep my peg that high for that long, like over to there, you know, and it kind of just didn't know if it would work out, but it worked out. And then 
the whole time were you thinking like I'm gonna flick the bars too? Because I was almost like people even before I saw it, people were like, he could have not done the bars and it would have been just as great. But then he flicks the bars too. It was like, was that the whole time you're thinking if I get off the, the fakey off the pegs right, I'm just gonna do it? Well, or? really, really, what happened is so I had this I, I had the idea to do the trick and I'm like, obviously stress like Nevada's on his way to the house and I'm stressed. I'm like, dude, I don't know, like. That's this is the only thing I can think of in my head. I'm like, I gotta get my banger today. I'm like, I don't know. I want to get something. Like, I, I want to do something crazy. And then, and I like, I taught my brother rides too, and I was telling it him, and he was just like, dude, no, like, you don't need to do that. You know, like, totally, like, that's like, kind of, like, not, not in a negative way, but just like, yo, that's crazy. Like, it doesn't really make like sense. You're gonna, you didn't want to see me get hurt. He was there when I like when I was filming it too, but uh, so I set up. I had a grind ledge and a flat rail at my house, and I set him up, and like Nava showed up to the house, and I was like. Just like going from the ledge, like trying to do it to the rail, and they were like closer and set up like more perfectly, obviously. And I'm like scared every time because I'm like, I don't like. It's not like I'm going from a ledge to a ledge. I'm going to this rail, and I don't want to like, you know. But I'm in my head. I'm like, I gotta, get, you know, I want to like go do this. It'll look so sick if I could actually like do this on that spot. And then as soon as Navaz hopped out of his car, I tried it, and I landed in the fakey double, and I did the fakey bar just because I landed in it so perfect. Okay. And Navaz was like, Oh my god, that was crazy. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like. Right, let's go you know let's go to the spot that's it i was like let's do it i don't want to even try it again like it worked and then it took me a while when we were there to actually like to try it. like it took me a while to even do the 180 like i had feeble pop over a bunch of times before i was even confident enough to do the 180 but then once i had gotten on the 180 like i didn't even land i think i like fell over the first time but i knew once i got on that i could do the bar you mm -hmm. know so it took me a while to actually like it took me every time to do the 180 took me a little bit of time because I didn't it's just the fear of you're going backwards towards your yeah. everything your head everything but um not to mention the first part of the trick is a feeble on a rail yeah you yeah. know I mean it's a square rail but yeah. you still have to like you have to, yeah, doing a feeble it, on a rail takes concentration yeah alone. and a switch too so it was a little like it's crazy it's, yeah oh, it's, it's kind of like that that the whole thing is just so mind-boggling it worked so well though that's the craziest part it's the, cool it's cool it's i think like it, that's the coolest part about bmx is when you can like come up with something in your head and like see it visualize it and then do it. you know what i mean something that's just like comes comes out of your own brain it's, um it's so creative you speaking know? of it's which, like it's it is my like bmx <laughs> is my creative it's yeah. you know it's hard, it's, it, it is like my creative outlet i think about that all the time like this is how i get like my artistic side out. I'm not an artist. I can't sit there with a paintbrush at all, you know. But I can the ride a bike. canvas, and, you know. Yeah, exactly. And ride things and see things a little different. And, um, so. your your facts ender is also kind of built around the same premise. Um, and then uh, do you want to talk a little bit about like you mentioned to me like you've actually gotten um your influence from a pretty unexpected yeah arena so to speak. Um, we'll cue that up now. But, yeah, um, let's let's put it on. It's it's a yeah. weird it's a weird thing, like, cause it's like it's rollerblading. But I, yeah, and so it's rollerblading, and yeah. I and I feel like I feel confident in talking about it, cause I'm so I'm I'm at the point now where I'm so over like what he's it, doing is nuts. Yeah, you can't deny that. Yeah, like look look at this. Like how could you like this? This was so I started watching these videos like when I was this is when I was like 15 years old. Okay. And um like this right here. Oh my god. Was, I, I saw this clip. I was just like, oh my god, that is the craziest. Nobody was doing anything like that. And I'd always, when I was like 15 years old, a bunch of the kids of mine like that in my local town, there's not that many kids that rode BMX anymore. Like, like the days of going to the track and trails were over, and like the kids that were doing freestyle were rollerblading, and they put me on to that video which mm -hmm. leading the blind it was like four by four video and it was like one of the craziest i had never seen like i had obviously seen bmx street videos but i had never seen anyone go like like ride setups that big and do that kind of those kind of grind variations where they're just transferring from like rails to rails and to me that was like if i can do that on my bike like that would be like the crazy you know what i mean and in my head i'm like i don't know if that'll you know what i mean if that'll ever really like if i'll ever really be able to do stuff like that but then Ten years later, I kind of kind of figured it out. I guess it, you can say, but out. it's it's funny. Like I used to ride with all the rollerblading kids, and that's like that's like what that was like the thing. Like they would always try to like do like different rail to ledges, and like so I'd always kind of be riding this stuff. But at the time, I had like two pegs, so it'd be more or less like grind gap grinds, like straight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I do stuff like that, but but yeah, man, it's 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 cool. I think it's cool that I got influence from rollerblading. I think rollerblading is sick, and I really like. And I, I really do believe that too, and I hate how much hate there is like 
on roller. I hate how much hate there is in general. Like in, in just like lot. in there's just in just like the extreme sports world, you know, you have like skateboarding, you have scootering, you have bike riding, and you have this like it's just like I don't know how else to say it. It's just kinda like what's the word I'm looking for? Discrimination. You know, like that's <laughs> it's discrimination. And it's like it's it's no different. It's no different than like like Back in the day, you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's there's water fountains that were labeled white and black. You know, like, what do you want? Two different skate parks for a bike and a skateboard? Like, it's it's ridiculous. Like, you're doing the same thing. Your mindset of what you're doing is so similar. It's so on par and so on track. You, you're doing almost the same thing. You're, 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 you're like, your minds work so much alike. You just happen to use the slightest bit. It's like you're using a paint can versus a paint brush. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like... It's it's so and it just drives me crazy that it's like you go to the skate park and you you hear all these kids are like whether it's the skaters hating on the scooters or hating on the bikes or it's like hate or it's the bikes hating on the scooters or it's like you know what I mean like the someone hating on someone and it's always just like it's just like shut up you know yeah. like I don't want to hear it it's just like shut up dude just figure it out figure it out don't like wait your turn in line it's the same thing I got a bike you got a skateboard it's whatever like common courtesy you know the rules you know the rules of the skateboard you know the rules of whatever but it's just that like that whole like disrespect and lack of like you know what i mean like there's so many even so many bikes oh scootering it's so whack and it's like it's not for you that's fine you know yeah. what i mean like you don't like it it's cool i don't like it. i i think it's cool that people do it but to me it's like i don't like i'm not it doesn't appeal to me because i don't like it's just not what i'm into you know just like right. some people skateboarding doesn't appeal to them or rollerblades don't appeal to them it's just whatever it's just what you're drawn to and it shouldn't it should never be this thing where where people are looking at it and being like, oh, this person is whack or this person's this or that because they're doing something that's just a little bit different, you know? And that's like, that that whole like little negativity thing that like goes on within the, the extreme sports world, it just it drives me, it drives me insane. It's good to see you're, up, you're above all that. Yeah, you know? I mean, I mean, and not, not to say like, I haven't gotten into it with a skater before, I haven't gotten into it, but it's never for like, it's never because that person's a skateboarder, that, it's just, you get into it with people. It's whatever. Oh, it's, you, know, it's you have altercations. Yeah, yeah, I could get into it with a biker. I've gotten into it with bikers. You know, it's not. It's it's people. You know, like it's just people talking, and it's just it's respect. You know, like you go somewhere, you're doing something that's a little different than somebody else. Just respect each other, and 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 just carry on with your day. Like, don't let it ruin your day because I'm doing something that's a little bit different than yours. And like, oh, maybe I accidentally coincidentally cut you off at the skate park, or like, you know, how many times you coincidentally cut me off? You know, it just it ha it happened. You know, yeah. and it's like. If a skater cut a skater off, it's fine. Or if a biker cut a biker off, it's fine. But if a scooter cuts a biker off, or if a skater cuts a biker off, or a biker cuts a skater off, all of a sudden it's like, oh, this other thing that's a little <laughs> bit different than me. It's just like, yo, it's so like, how do you not see on the bigger scale of things that it's just, it's just, it's just discrimination, you know? It's like you're just, you're finding something a little bit different and you're pointing it out and you're, that's different than me and I'm just gonna, like, you know, it's just, oh, I hate it, man. It drives me crazy. But, is what it is. You know, it's, it's what it is. You know, I, I get it. I totally get it. I understand. Like, I understand why people have their feelings and they they have their thoughts about things. But for me, anyway, I think it's cool that everyone's out there doing their thing. I love going to the skate park. I love when I see rollerbladers out here because I know that's kind of where like SoCal and San Diego in general. A lot of that video was filmed in San Diego. Okay. So like when I see like like rollerblade, like I think that's cool because it's it's did not nobody's really doing it right now. The people no. that are at the skate park rollerblading, they like rollerblading. You know, they don't care what anyone else thinks. They're rollerblading because they that's what they're into and that's like that's cool to me you know it's cool that people are doing things not because it's the cool thing to do but because they want to do it you know yeah. i think bmx for a long time kind of always was like that when i was a kid people did it because they wanted to do it you know it was almost uncool when i was a kid to ride bikes you know it was like it's okay. atypical atypical of like uh, it wasn't stereo, accepted yeah. at all. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. True, like misfits sort of yeah yeah so it's like you see that you see that at the skate parks with people and it's like you know, like, it's, like, just, like, same thing on the football field where, like, you know, like, there's just, like, the bat, like, it's, like, so, it's, like, I don't know, this is not, I mean, but that's just, that's human nature at the same time, so, like, I don't know, you can't really, you can only do so much about it, but I think that the, uh, I think that, uh, I think, I think eventually it'll, it'll fade, it'll dissolve, you know. Roblaying is definitely the uh, the black sheep of action sports. It's yeah, it's crazy, say. man. Like, they get it harder than anyone else. But I feel like, it's funny because I've picked up, uh, when they were still around, it was called Daily Bread, I think. It was like Roblaying yeah. magazine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were really good about actually saying where the spots were. Yeah. They would say, like, the name of the city a lot for the yeah. rails or whatever. So yeah, I would yeah. look at it for, for spots. For spots, yeah. And I remember thinking, like, holy shit, Roblaters are nuts now. When you're growing up, I feel like, 
the stuff they did, like, you know, all your friends would do a 360 down, like, a 10 stair yeah. and grab their boot. And, and they're like, yeah. oh, he's good. But actually, yeah. that was actually not that hard for yeah, elevating. Yeah, exactly. But now the dudes who stuck with it are, like, riding down walls and pulling off walls to rails. Yeah, and like, yeah. Just, that rail? Like, just it's, it's insane, really next insane. level. Insane. Like, yeah. even that video, I was, like, I mean, that time I was 15 when that came out. So you got to figure they would probably took a good like four years three years whatever to film it so i mean that's like over 10 years like 11 12 13 years ago i mean the one dude chris happy his banger is like a fakie seven down el toro like i get it like it's rollerblades but like that's not like it's, that's it's like you're you're going backwards down a 20 stair with an uphill landing and you're doing two backwards 360s and landing backwards like there's so much risk involved in that and there's a, and like it's that's you know to me that's like that's respectable it's whatever it's, that's crazy I mean, yeah. did you have a helmet on no helmet that's dude, no helmet. oh my god dude. yeah that's, savage that's and they insane. they like that like especially chris haffey in that in that video he wrote some like really 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 scary big like gap to gap to stuff or like a lot of times they'll do like which is crazy like they'll do like they'll find the the rails that go down and they you and then they go down and they'll grind the inside rail and like hop off the down part over the over the L to flat, which is oh, good. Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's crazy. Like one eight. Like it, so that's that's just like, like I. You know what I mean? I ride real spots. I'm comfortable on my bike. I know that. Like I know what goes into it. I know how scary it is to do that stuff. So I know it's just like, and regardless, those dudes are into it. They're pushing it and they're seeing. They're looking at the same thing. They're looking at the architecture or whatever. And they're they're fine. They're putting their little touch on it and finding their own little artistic whatever. You know. Right. It is crazy how long we just talked about rollerblading. I know. We did talk about rollerblading for a while. <laughs> but, cool. uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a conversation, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, totally off topic, but something people are probably curious about is, being from Jersey, can you uh, explain the name of your handlebars? Yeah, yeah, handlebars? man. The, the Empire, I got them right here to show you guys. Empire bars. I got a lot of, I got a lot of, a lot of criticism for these when they first came out because I'm technically not from New York City. But um, yeah, we were just trying to come up with a name for the bar that more or less fit the brand, let alone like my personal image, you know. And I had filmed my uh, animal part in. This was right after I had filmed my part in New York City, and the entire part was in New York City except for the last clip. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just it, it felt like it kind of made sense to do something with New York City like and an homage, and, so to speak. And, maybe? and what'd you say? Like, like an homage to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Know? And it just it was you know, and we came up with the name of the Empire State Bars, and it just kind of it kind of kind of made sense. And Ryan did the art, and it just it all looked right and it felt right. So it was it's not too much thought of it being like a personal thing, more or less just like something cool, something. It's like an, it's always been kind of a New York City brand. So yeah, like I'm psyched on the way they turned out. That looks awesome. The logo yeah. looks sick. The yeah, gold yeah. looks really nice on the black. Yeah, too. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. These, these bars are available at dancecomp.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, so I think it's about. I think we're at a good. Actually, no. You know what? Before we do that, um, I, I uh, got a little sidetracked. But another thing, um, from facts is your fence, your crash. Into yeah, the fence. smash this face up. Yeah. So. Um, Let's watch that real quick. That's I don't want to watch. Oh, you guys well, actually, yeah, you might. <laughs> nah, I've watched it so many times. I don't care. We have we have an extended cut with the. Uh, so, obviously, you did it. Yeah. And then you, did you want to do something else? Is that? Oh I'm assuming, my god. I'm assuming, like, yeah, I wanted to just 180. Oh, you wanted to 180 that thing. Yeah, I just wanted to like bump. I was trying to like bump it and okay. 180 up over the top. But if you look, if you watch the clip, if you look at the clip there's a support beam of the fence that's just to the left of the ledge a little bit. So when I was like riding okay. up the ledge, I had to carry my momentum to the left a little bit because if I went straight up into the fence and it was like a skinny ledge, I went straight up into the fence and I'd hit the fence, there was too much flex in the fence because there was no support there. So I'd instantly get sent over the bars all crazy. Um, so I'm like, as I'm doing it, I'm trying to carry my weight to the left to the support beam to kind of give me enough momentum to get over the wall, you know? And I, I did it the first time, like I just hit it just right. And I'm trying to 180 it. So I'm kind of doing like a little bit of pre-carve and just, just like, you know, like I didn't even, like, I don't know, man. It's just, you're not, it's one you of those definitely things. didn't think that was gonna happen. You get caught slipping. My front wheel just, just a little bit too early came off, dropped down and just, you know, straight into my face. Just was so unexpected, you know, it just. Yeah, it was, that was brutal. Yeah, um, this is a bummer. I mean, 
just the the idea, like looking at that spot. I don't I don't know if people would look at me like I'm gonna bash up that fence and go over this wall. Yeah, like, it just looked cool. I don't know. I was like that. This looks cool. It, I, no one's obviously it doesn't look like anyone rid it, and it was kind of like that. Just because like even under the fence, it was like hollow underneath, and there was like the garage underneath. So mm -hmm. I just I, in my head, I'm like, dude, this looks. It's just such a cool way to ride it to get up to the top. You know? And yeah. Just, kind of will look cool and I did the hop and I was like yeah it looks kind of cool but I think if I like were to bash and like tuck a 180 and get like it, I'd really be psyched on it mm -hmm. it's one of those things you're getting a little too greedy I guess just let it go you definitely I feel like um Animal House and the facts your your like eye for setups is really like coming out like you can really because that's, that's that's just that's a really wild to thing to ride that's, that's like, sick to hear um yeah, what cool. uh how was the aftermath of that crash? Oh, man, it was pretty rough. Like, did you I mess might, up a tooth? Yeah, the tooth. This like, my big one right here is like, it got pushed in, and like the the root of the root of the actual tooth came out into like my upper lip. So it was like oh, that's where like all this like came from was like my tooth, the root piercing up through there, and like the the fence smat. Like it just was like. It was bad. It was bad because we got to the, I got to the, at first I got into the ambulance and like the dudes were so arrogant. It was like two dudes and they were just so arrogant about everything. And they were like asking me to give them information. And I'm like, Arr! you know, and yeah. like, just tell us. And I'm like, blood's coming out of my mouth. Like, I can't talk to you. Do you not see like what is going on right here? Like, and like, I'm getting so mad and I'm, I'm like, yo, like, it's just like, just like, what? Take my wallet. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, figure this out. You know, yeah. like, stop there's getting that. Like, they're like copping attitude with me, and I'm just so like, e oh like, my god. On top of like all this, like, cause anytime you hit your face, it's so close to your brain. You just feel everything, and I'm just, it's so excruciating. And then I get put into like, they get me right into the ER, and they put me in a room, and I'm sitting in this room for like two hours before they did anything with just like, and then the whole time I'm like, my tooth, like, I just want to like, in my, I can't see it, but I'm like, dude, I just want to push it back in because like. I know it's dying as I'm sitting here. I still have like tooth sensitivity. I gotta go to a dentist soon. It's kind of, it's kind of frustrating. But aside from that, like all the actual the damages, like I broke my nose in a few places, but it didn't deviate the septum, so it was like that was fine. And I just had some deep lacerations. I still have some scarring right here, but it's been healing up real nice. I have like this scar tissue that's in here. It's it's pretty thick, um, and it's just like just hard scar tissue. I try to work it out and massage it. And I always have my People probably look at me like I'm weird in my hands in my mouth, like, oh. <laughs> but it's just like this thick scar tissue and it's like up here too. And it's like slowly been working its way out. Like even my lip kind of like hangs down a little bit now because it's just, yeah, I took one. Yeah, it's gnarly. I actually, um, when I cut up that footage for the reel uh, just the other day and then um, over on sun Saturday, I went out shooting photos yeah. and uh, with this dude in LA and he, he fell on his face like really bad. <sighs> And uh, I had just watched your footage, you know, I'm cutting it, and I'm like, oh, this is, this is gnarly, and his crash was, like, brutal. Yeah. His face. And I was like, I was like, oh, too many, too many face crashes. Like, this, is, yeah. this sucks, dude. I was like, it was actually the gnarliest cra crash, like, as far as, like, blood I've ever witnessed in my life. Like, personally, it was, I was like, just, I am, was, yeah, glad I wasn't there for that yeah, one, man. Dude, it's the worst, like. Yeah. But, um, that's the worst too. It's like there's so much blood that you're like you're freaking out on that alone. You're like, am I losing too much? Like it was just for me, it was just coming out, and I'm yeah, just like, dude, there's just blood. There's just so much blood. I'm like, this is like, it's not. It's it, yeah. it just. Oh, I'm just thinking about it yeah. right now. I'm like, yeah, it was gnarly. <laughs> this is a good one. So. uh Evil Dot Renzo wants to know uh, what spot in Philly do you enjoy the most and why? Currently, ah oh man, that's so hard. A lot of spots have went to recently that I'm pretty bummed about. Like Love Park was always one of my favorites, just just because. I mean, like that whole area in general when I grew up was my favorite was like City Hall, Love Park, and the Dominoes because it's like. Yeah, now it's completely different. Like City Hall, there's nothing to ride. They completely changed everything. But that was like, there was a lot of stuff to ride back. Yeah, the a was lot, crazy. yeah, like a lot, like Same. a lot of footage you've probably seen has, has been filmed there. Um, that was like one of my favorite spots to ride. And then that got shut down. And then it was like Love Park. We'd ride there, you know. And then that got shut down. And then it's like now I'd say the Dominoes. And I think just, just for for the simple fact of it being in Philly, and I can ride it any hour, like more or less late hours, because it's lit and. It's 
it's perfect concrete, everything's smooth, and it's just like a real sessionable, chill spot that I can go just be by myself and just cruise. And like, there's always people skating, people kind of hanging, and it's just, it's a good, good little atmosphere to kind of ride. It's a little anytime. triangle, they're all yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, and there's, there's, yeah, exactly. Like there was, it, it back in the day, it was insane. Even when Love was running, then you had the two parks. It's like Nuts. literally riding like three skate plazas, like you know <laughs> what I mean, like with all different things. And everything was a little different. It was so cool to be like, you could just get lost there forever. But I mean, even now, like I'd have to say the dominoes because the dominoes are so much fun. There's a bunch of ledgers, there's a bunch of cool stuff to ride, and it's just. City Hall, you're just, there's no other feeling than being like Center City feeling. Center it's city. got that, it's yep. got that cool feel to it. Uh, let's see, um, this we answered that one. Let's see. Oh, Evil asked us to make sure you answer his question, and we did, so that's good. Um, how'd you first meet Gary? We already talked about that. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Samuel um, Butchert, uh, I butchered that name. What was the scariest thing you ever did on your bike? Oh man. Um oh, no. I don't know. I've been scared a bunch of times. <laughs> I don't know. I really like We're gonna need to think of maybe uh simpler terms, maybe even just more recently maybe I think racing. It has to be racing. Racing, really? Why racing. would it be racing? Um, <clears throat> South Park. South Park is like this super, super gnarly racetrack. When I was like 10 or 11 years old, they had this, they had like the pro, it's like the pro jump. And it's like, you come out of the second turn and you're going faster than any other track you've ever been to. It's like paved turn and you bomb out and you hit this triple, like you speed jump a triple that's pretty big. You know, I think it's like 25, 30 foot triple and you're like, you're moving and the landing of the triple is just a down, like the whole track, it's just a giant that like the landing goes so long and then it flattens out. I think the track's different now, but, and then there's this, it's actually a step up and I think it was like, the gap on it was like 40 feet or something oh like gosh. that. And like Todd Lyons like flipped it back. It was crazy, he like, it was like a big thing, but the lip was like a wall. It was like a ski jump, you know? It was something that at the time I'd never even hit anything remotely close to it, to that big, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just like, I was like, just wanted to hit it, obviously, like a young kid, like like young, like no, I don't think anyone my age was really hitting it, but there were kids like around my age that were like, like a few would try to hit it, and it was kind of like wanted to be like a young, like the young kid hitting it, you know? Right. Um, Ten or twelve. That's yeah, like somewhere, like there was a few kids that were hitting it back in the day. Like I think Chris Fox actually was at. It's funny, I saw him recently. I used to race with him. We used to actually be on the same team, which is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, we used to race together, and I think he might, he was one of the younger dudes hitting it there. I'm pretty sure. I bet he was. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But it was like, uh, yeah, it, it was just one of those things, man. Like you, it was just full speed. You're going full, like, just like, like full. I never pedaled out a lip that fast. And I jumped it the first time and I cleared it, made it smooth. And then like, I went to go do it again because like in my head, I'm like, I can jump it. You know, I want to do it in the race because you save time. Like, it's like a huge advantage if you can hit, if you could hit it, it's a lot shorter of a line. Um, so yeah, I, I like cased the triple before it. And just like, oh, against my better judgment. I knew they were kicking us off the track and I knew, I'm like, I gotta do it again, you know? And like, I just came up a little bit short and I'm just paddling at the wall and like the whole time I like knew I didn't have the speed, but for whatever reason, I was just at that age of like, uh-uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm <laughs> doing it. And yeah, that was like, probably like going up the lip. I think that, and then like being in the air, that was probably the, the slowest crash, slowest like, Cause you're clipped in too, like when you're racing, which is oh, gnarly. Yeah. Your feet, you can't get out, you can't bail. Like you're going down with the ship. And I front cased it, and I had carbon oh, fiber. Oh front God. cased it, front cased it with carbon fiber for it's just like, and I like like rainbowed it too. You know, it was like a step up that like you know the pros are like mobbing over, and I'm just like woo up in the air coming down, and it's just such a long like wait for me to just like look like oh my God, this is it. Here we go. And yeah, front first, the whole front fork snapped in half. The front wheel ended up like rolling in front of me and I just like, it didn't, the crash wasn't too, like I got some brush burns and stuff. The crash wasn't too bad, but the actual like fear of like, when I was like to actually do it, to get myself to do it. And then like to actually be in it the first time I'm doing it. And then the second time, like knowing that I wasn't gonna make it was probably one of the, that was probably one of the scarier ones. You know, the hang time. Just, just waiting, the hang, that's waiting. a dead hang time. Yeah. You know, cause it's like a lot of the, like the fence was terrible, but I didn't know it was coming. So it wasn't like scary, you know, whereas like, this is something like I knew it was coming for a really long time. 
He's kind of. But it just felt like an eternity yeah. in the air. Yeah, um, that one sticks in my brain pretty that's hard. The worst. Billy Perry wants to know. Uh, tell us about the power of the pen. The power of the pen, dude. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know if I can talk about that one on on camera, but the pen, the pen's strong. The pen is with you. The pen shall be, Billy man. I'm gonna get you for that one, dude. I'm gonna get you for that one. I have to ask you about that one later. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, ask Billy about the pen. Billy, how much did you get done when you were out here? That's what we should really ask. How much you get? How much, how much did you get done when you were out here? That's that's the power of the pen right there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we'll have to talk about that one later. Why do you go out? Oh, I see. Scott, Scott the Wood wants to know why do you go out and snorkel when you can't swim for shit? He loves your videos. Why do I go out and snorkel? I'm not that bad. Of, that's the thing. Is like I'm not really that bad of a swimmer. That whole thing just kind of like, I don't know. I don't think we were paying attention too much, and like we didn't really know. Like I don't. I'm not like a knowledgeable swimmer, I guess you can say. Oh, this is, if you're not aware, I, like me and Billy were kind of drowning in the ocean the other day. We kind of got to get saved by a lifeguard. Oh, man. We were at the cove and like we got pulled over into the rocks and it was just one of those situations where like we weren't paying attention and the waves got real big and they like, it just like was pulling, it pulled us over to the rocks and then was like pulling us into shore and we were like, kind of like we got into the thing and we were like trying to get back out mm -hmm. and like before we eat like, we were kind of, we were in like pretty bad, like pretty bad area. And we were starting, like, as we were starting to swim out or trying to swim out, like the lifeguards were already there. And they were like, you guys are in a bad area. You got to get out of here. So they had like the, the red things, you know? Oh, okay. I filmed it with a GoPro. I had, <laughs> like, I had the GoPro in my head. I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing. I like put it in super view. I had it like sitting on the, on the buoy. So I'm like, getting <laughs> saved. <laughs> it was such a ridiculous video. But yeah, we just, I don't know. Billy had never been snorkeling and like, if you've ever been to the you have you been to the cove before mm -hmm. it's it's beautiful like when it's when it's clear and there's good visibility like you can see all these different crazy fishes you can see so much underwater aquatic wildlife and it's it's super cool but we went out there was no visibility and the, and the water was rough and it was really cold so we kind of just didn't have the best time we got got ourselves into some trouble pretty you quick got some good footage we got some good footage it's pretty <laughs> funny um let's see uh a couple more questions we talked about um Jeffrey uh, Huron Camp wants to know what's your favorite clip in Deadline. God, favorite clip in Deadline. I never really thought about that one. Everyone has such crazy parts in Deadline. Oh my God. He didn't specify if it was your like for you. No, no. I, I mean, I wouldn't even say my own clip. I was <laughs> say someone, as soon as he said a favorite clip in Deadline, I was already thinking about somebody else's. Um, and Joe Riley. Yeah, <laughs> Joe Riley, Downside Ice at, uh, what's the name of that skate park? You know which one of the... I know the park, but I don't know the name of that. Uh, it's funny, because i seen, like, Mike Gray and Tyler, and I think, like, Tyra were just there riding it on Instagram. I forget the name of it, though. I never ride there. But, yeah, the, it's the only the only park clip in the entire video, and he does the Downside Ice pick, just because it's just random in the video, and if you've ever been there, it's so, like, so gnarly. Joe Riley's a SoCal legend, yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, it definitely is. That's definitely my favorite clip. Um, no, I didn't read this one yet, but it's from it's from Sean Burns. If all pro BMX heroes had sex changes, and you, uh, I'm not gonna read this one. <laughs> yeah, Burns is crazy. Uh, that's a weird one. Burns, you wild. Uh, I should have read that one more before I started reading out loud. Let's see, <laughs> leave it uh, to Burns. Yeah, for sure. He probably Burns is. You know what though, Burns. Uh, he's one of the first people like, like on one of my first street trips. He kind of him and Albie kind of showed me around. Showed us around, like me and Garrett, when we were up in Boston, like way when we were first filming for Deadline. Like, I don't even know if any of the clips were actually in the video, but it was so cool chilling with those dudes. Like, Albie, especially. Like, that dude, he's a rad, like, rad human being. A solid cruise right there, for sure. Yeah. Burns stuff, it just likes to stir the pot. Oh, he loves it, dude. I love it too, though. I love reading it. It's, yeah, it's, he's, yeah, it's he's, he's a unique individual. Yeah. I definitely love it. Um, let's see. Joel Joel Eski, what would you be doing if you weren't a pro BMX rider? <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Oh, man, I don't know. I couldn't even, I, honestly, like... You were riding since you were two, so yeah, you like, don't know anything it's else. So, it's so <laughs> weird. Maybe riding motorcycles, that'd probably be pretty sick. When I was a little kid, when I was like five years old, my dad bought me a 50. Listen to talk about torture. Dad bought, bought me a 50 and he kept it in the garage and he didn't tell me it was mine, but it was just in the garage. My dad had a dirt bike at the time and like the 50 was just sitting there. 
and he brought it home without telling my mom. My mom was like, no way, no way. And, but I, this conversation, I was told about this later down the line. The conversation never happened in front of me. But uh, I'd go out every morning, I'd wake up, I'd wake up at like five in the morning when everyone was still asleep and I'd sneak out in the garage and I'd just sit on it for like two, three hours and be like, I hope I can get the ride. And my dad was like, no, 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 it's, it's, a, it's our friend's son, we're just holding it here. And I'm like, I thought like, in my head, like I kind of thought like maybe it's mine, you know, and like maybe it'll be mine. And then one day it was just gone. Oh. And I was just so, it was such a bummer, man. Like I was, I ended up getting a dirt bike when I was a little bit older, but at that time I was already doing other things. That was a bummer. Yeah, it was a bummer, dude. My mom, she just away. didn't, she didn't safety, you know. I don't blame her though, especially me being with the personality that I have, and like I was already at that age jumping my bike kind of crazy. She was probably like, the last thing we need to do is put a motor under him. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I can see, I can see your mom. Yeah, so I, I get it. My dad was, my dad, was a pretty firm rule. As long as I lived in their house, I could not own a motorcycle. Yep. I yeah, I get it, man. I mean, they they're pretty laid back now, like. I actually have an enduro that I'm selling now back on the East Coast. I want to eventually get one out here because that's like ideal bike to have for me anyway, just to be able to ride on the road. Like the one I had was basically like a dirt bike okay. that had plates on it, you know, just mm -hmm. barely, like just enough to be street legal, had a title. So it was like more or less like a means for me to get to all these tracks and trails and stuff that I wanted to get to. Just kind of road riding like 45 minutes down to like the Pine Barrens in Jersey or whatever and mobbing all day with like my friends and stuff. Right. I definitely enjoy dirt bikes. They're fun. Yeah, I think that's what I'd be riding dirt bikes for sure. Something, it's funny because like bikes have always been in my family. My great uncle actually used to race the circle tracks. Do you remember the circle tracks? The motocross where they used to race the, on the dirt. Like it's, cr I didn't I even know it existed. That. So they used to, this is like old school motorcycle racing. And they used to race on dirt tracks, like around, like almost like a NASCAR on motorcycles. And they're just like full throttle, like fishtailing around. Like it's gnarly. It's that pretty, yeah, I was like watching this. And he was always into dirt bikes and stuff like that too. So I think that's kind of like. It was my, in your blood, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, what my, that's what my parents say anyway. Just that's cool. Something about being on like two wheels and moving with that, like the balance and the movement and the free, I don't know, just something about it. Just, I'm so attracted to it. It's crazy. It's definitely a one of kind of feeling. Yeah, for sure. it's nothing like it. Uh, let's see. Um, Eric Flores wants to know how happy are you with your facts part? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's it's all right. I'm not I'm not like too psyched on it. I just just because like, I mean, the only person I think I even asked their opinion on it was like Sean Riccani. Mm -hmm. And like, if you don't know Sean, Sean's blunt. And his like, his response was like, Oh yeah, dude, your animal house your animal house part was better. And I was just like, <laughs> such a little like you that's know. Why I, but, asked him. But that's kind of yeah. That's why I knew I get. It. it was just one of those things where like I, I mean I'm psyched on it. Obviously, I just would have liked to like get some other things like you know it's just but that's filming you know it's never gonna be what you want it to be you're never gonna be totally happy with anything and it's like a lot harder on the east coast you know <laughs> like to, it, it just is it's that's why i'm back out here you know it's so hard to get out to spots with a filmer that you want to get to when the weather's right the pedestrian traffic's right the regular traffic's right there's, you're not getting kicked out like so many factors that go into it and it's just not, it's not, people aren't doing it as much on the East Coast. So like we're out here, it's like everyone's on the weekends, everyone's out, you know, where mm -hmm. it's like out there, it's kind of like, dude, there'll be weekends where there's not really that many people riding or if they are riding, it's like no one's really filming. There's not a filmer. It's hard to get someone. It's just never like, at, at least for when I was out there, it just never really worked out the way I wanted it to. There was just too much downtime, which is like actually why I started like the whole YouTube thing and started filming and started doing that because I just had so much free time and like time where I, like I wasn't able to get out with a filmer or start doing stuff like that. I felt like I had to kind of start creating my own content. That's definitely um, something I want to touch upon more. Um, maybe we'll just fire through. You could just lock a lot of questions here. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, someone, let's see. Uh, let's see. New projects. Let's see. Mad Mike 570 wants to know if you would ever consider riding a cassette again. Nah. I didn't think so, nah, but I'm, <laughs> I just... so, I'm so on it. It's crazy. Like I've I've had that thought too and uh, like I'd ride no chain before I rode a cassette, which is crazy to think about, but it's just like it's just a different it's like a whole different machine with a coaster. Like it just it's different you know it's mm -hmm. a whole it's just so much and it's it's enabling in the sense that there's so much more you can do 
and it's also challenging because it's so much harder to do backwards tricks with a, like in my opinion with a coaster than it is with a cassette because you don't have that pedal pressure and you can't control it that way you know you kind of you are essentially free so there's a lot more that it like it almost like like when I remember when I put it on it like rejuvenated my my like want to ride again like I put it on I was just like oh my god there's so many things I don't know how to do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just like I want to learn so much and it kind of was just like wow like the but like it just I mean I had obviously watched people ride free coasters before like you know Ian Schwartz was like a big influence back in the day but like I just never really saw myself like riding one you know I didn't mm -hmm. really ever think I could do it there's it always the technology was always I'd always heard people breaking them and like like whips were always a weird concern of mine because like back in the day like it just felt like that freeness would make them a little bit harder which it really doesn't but it's just kind of like a bunch of excuses to not put one on until I finally did and once I did I was hooked nice yeah they've definitely got they seem that they've got a lot better over the years yeah um let's see uh devil underscore bmx wants to know do you ever regret your move to san diego and have you experienced any homesickness or you know um definitely no regrets but i will say like th this time not at all like i haven't been homesick at all but the first time i moved out here it, i went through like some homesickness for a while for sure because it was the first time i had ever been away from home really like i'd always lived at home even when I was in college, I like lived at home and, and just to save money. And uh, it was the first time that I had ever like been on my own and I was so far away from, it wasn't like I was like on my own in Philly, you know, where I'm mm -hmm. an hour away from my parents and my family. It was like on the other side of the country. So just kind of like, definitely like just growing up, you know, I think just learning how to be an adult and be on your own and like definitely had to go through through a little bit of like homesickness and like you know this is crazy you know everything's different out here and it's, it's hard you know people will make a bunch of excuses about like why it's not that good or why they don't want to do it but I think a lot of people it's just it it gets to them being that far and being in that far of a place for a long time and like being that far away from what they're familiar with and their family and everything like that because it, it get like it gets you you know like just keep like just simple things kicking it with your mom your dad your like my brother like I'm this probably like that's like my brother me and him have like always been super tight our entire lives and not having him around and not being able to kick it with him every day is like that's the hardest you know because you say you're going to go home and you're going to visit but it's just it's you can only do it so many times a year you know it's not it's not a short short trip and it's not a cheap one by any means but no regrets nice homesickness not so much this much this time anymore that's good let's see and there's so many questions. We could be here all day with these. <laughs> uh, let's just do one more, and then uh, we'll get back to a uh, regular scheduled program. Uh, let's see. Well, two more. Uh, Chris, 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 ninety seventy eight wants to know if you were to do a trick on El Toro, what would it be? He didn't specify the rail or the stairs. He just said off of El Toro. Yeah, the rail's gone now, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's. And not nothing anymore because I'm not really a big gap guy. I don't really like landing. I mean, I do. I, I don't want to say that. Like, I definitely like it, but as I got older, I kind of like would rather find a setup or something to grind. I really like grinding. So like, now that that rail is gone, that that setup really has no appeal to me. And I think all the crazy tricks. I mean, like maybe like I don't know what hasn't been done. Everything's been tried. Like half gap maybe, but that's. We saw it happen to be, you know, yeah, like, yeah. it won't look like, and like, it's funny because like what happened to him, I could easily see happening to anyone, like getting that like sideways drift, you know, because oh, yeah. when you like the bigger stuff I have cab, I, I feel it sometimes if you don't, if you get a little weird, you know, and you have to go so fast. So like, dude, I don't even, like there's really, maybe the like, long time what, like, air like, yeah, like what hasn't been done there. That's like, I don't really know. I, I definitely look at you as more of a setup guy. Definitely not. Yeah, El Toro. Just, it's like yeah, a straight just shot, not, wild man move. Yeah, it's not it. Not really. Not calling my name too much. Let's see. Um, I think we're going to dip out of the Instagram realm. Um, another thing I want to talk to you a little about was uh, well, actually, um, you uh, I know um, like a like health and nutrition is kind of a thing for you as yeah. far as like taking yeah. care of yourself. Do you yeah. wanna, you meant you referenced back since you were like running track in school or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, man. So like 
for me, like my whole, like I like delved into the whole like health and like fitness world, I guess it started when I was young and I, like one of my friends was trying to get me to run cross country and I like, not gonna lie, I'm kind of competitive and so is he. And he's kind of like, nah, you can't do it, can't do it. It's way harder than you think. I'm like, dude, it's just running. Like you can figure it out. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? And like, so it just kind of was like, kind of got me to do it. You know, I was like, yeah, just do it, just do it. So I got into it, you know, and I got real into it and I'm like, just trying to push it as hard as I can. And I think I did too much too soon. And like, I think running is one of those things you really do have to like work up to, you know? And I just, my body, I don't like, just that pound, like, consistent pounding on the knees. And mm -hmm. like, like a lot of times we're running on the side of the road where like the surface is kind of slanted. Yep. It just, I had, it just was ruining my, my knee. I started getting all kinds of crazy knee pains to the point where I was like having trouble riding. Uh, so like I went to the doctor and you know, they, like he explained it was more or less of a, a misalignment issue and I went to physical therapy for it. And that was like when I realized, you know, like, you, like, and, like that's kind of where it started to realize how in depth the, like the muscular system of the body is and how certain muscles being stronger than others can cause so much pain and discomfort. And like, you'll be so much more prone to injury if you do have those imbalances, those muscular imbalances, because when you're riding a bike, I mean, think about it. You're like, you're crouched over in this yeah. awkward position, you know, your <laughs> hips are tight, your hip flexors are, or your hips are kind of like positioned to where they're out of place the majority of the time, which is why like my bike is set up the way it is now. Like I run like taller bars and like shorter cranks. So I try to like, really a lot of it is for that reason and just mm -hmm. like balancing riding in general. but just like it is really stressful riding. And if you're doing that all the time, what happens is your muscles, like especially your hips are gonna get stronger than like your inner thighs say, and your outer muscles are gonna get stronger. And that's exactly the problem. I was having my outer muscles, they, like especially out here, were, were, were getting stronger than the ones on the inside. So my kneecaps would track to the outside a little bit. And it was just causing like just a pain, just pain, you know, it really wasn't like damaging or anything, but it was just a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain and irritation. So like once I, I learned that, that kind of like brought me into it. And then, you know, I got better and then like stopped doing, obviously slacked and then it got worse and then got back into it. And then I ended up tearing my ACL, which was completely unrelated to like any type of, I just blew it out. Like there was, there was nothing saving it, you know, it was just mm -hmm. the way I went down. But um, after I blew that out, I, I like, that's a, it's, a, it's a hard injury to overcome. And it's a long one, you know, especially I had like the full on surgery with a cadaver. Mine was completely blown. Um, takes a long time so so my what I wanted to do was obviously reduce my my time mm -hmm. healing as much as possible and be 100% when I came out of it so I mean I, I'd known already how much at that point like how, how important health and nutrition was so for me I like wanted to do as much as I could and I started learning about juicing and I learned about like, the importance of vegetables and micronutrients and like all these different vitamins that you're not getting from normal food you know and like really delving into the whole how bad some of the food is for us, you know, like mm -hmm. just just the like how unaware I was of some of the things, man. They put in food, it's so crazy, like it's it's insane. Like, like uh, I think I, don't even, I, don't even, I think Subway recently was like promoting uh -huh. their their sandwiches that like don't they no longer have like a plastic in their bread, but at one time they had or like some some type of something that was in the same thing that was in like yoga mats, you know. But they're advertising that they don't have it anymore because they used to, and it's just crazy to think that like. How is something that's making you know, like how that like it's obviously to preserve food and to, to make it last longer and to make more money. I, that's the end goal. But me not being aware of that and how like detrimental those things are to your body and how helpful the right things are to your body. Like that was my first really like learning experience and then mm -hmm. actually going through it and like seeing the difference. And I even like I was saying, like talking to you earlier, I don't know if it was before the cameras were on or not, but when when you're traveling, it really is hard to eat healthy. It's hard to to eat the foods that you want to eat and like get to a grocery store or whatever. So usually I find when I travel, I, I slack a lot more and I try not to let it get to me as much because I like want to enjoy the experience. But mm -hmm. you know, from then to when I'll come home and I'll be eating super healthy and I'll be on it, making food every day, I, I notice like, you know, the system's running better, I'm feeling better, my energy levels are up. Or is when I'm eating like fried greasy food all the time and it's just a nightmare for the digestive system. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a, uh... It's definitely, I'm, I'm happy to see that a lot of pros and just riders in general are starting to realize yeah, cause the it's benefits like, of it. Yeah, it's For like, our lifestyle, you need that. You do, you yeah. really, you need it. And you want it, everyone that, I don't care who that, everyone that rides, no one wants to not be able to ride. Like, you know, I know everyone, it's, it's inevitable. We're all gonna age, it's all, it happens to everyone. But being able to prolong the, 
you know what I mean, that, that loss and being able to get more years of, or more time spent on your bike by being healthier and being able to ride the way you, that's another thing too, like when I'm like, like especially with the physical therapy aspect and like the, the doing that type of work and going to the gym and like trying to, to focus on those alignment issues, like when I don't and I just slack and I'm traveling and I'm not stretching, like I'll start to feel it, you know, and mm-hmm. it'll be hard. Like it'll be like, I'll, I'll get up in the morning and I'll really feel it in my joints and it's nothing other than just like, you know, my body's at like, everything's just out of, out of place. You know, yeah. I'm not, I'm not working towards keeping it right, keeping it healthy, keeping it in line. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's, it's cool to learn, to learn about all that stuff. You know, it's cool that BMX helped me learn. Well, I guess cross country originally, but I mean, I think a lot of my, my initial issues stem from riding so much. Right. So I think like, and if I didn't have that drive for BMX uh, and have a drive for something to stay healthy for, you know, I think like a lot of people, Oh, my knees are bad. Like they, you know, they get to the doctor. Oh, and doctor says my knees are bad. I can't do anything anymore. You know, where it's like, for me, it's like, no, there's no way I'm not gonna ride. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to throw in a towel that quick. Yeah, it's like, nah, yeah. And then you realize how much you can do. You know, yeah. like yeah, that's it's, what's crazy. It's like, you really can fix these issues, and you really can, you know, like change things, and you know, like fix your body. It's with food and exercise. You know, yeah. it's not. It goes, it goes a long way. It, it does. It, it's it's Health. repairable for a long yeah. ways kids man if you're watching this stretch it's so important and it's like and there's a million different ways to stretch too so make sure you're doing the right kind uh, i recommend dyna- a dynamic warm-up dynamic stretching for the beginning and like more or less static tre- stretching at the end if you guys don't know what that is i don't want to waste too much time but just google it all you'll, you'll find all the information you need it's worth it yeah it's definitely worth it <laughs> um and then uh totally changing topics again um you touched upon it a little earlier but uh, let's talk a little bit more about like your just doing the vlogs. Like, what was your motivation for doing yeah, it? Yeah, the YouTube and, man. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Maybe like you know, I feel like obviously there's a lot. People catch a lot of flack for doing it, but yeah, yeah. I think I mean I think a lot of people got a lot of hate from it initially because it was foreign and it was unknown and like this is how people tend to look at things when they don't understand things. It's like, what is this? Why is it different? Like, I don't know. But my the whole ambition for starting like basically like starting to kind of film and try to put out my own content was like I said earlier my lack of having people to go out and ride with people to film with every day in Philly where it's like yo I, I'm riding so much and I'm doing all these things but I'm like not filming any of them because I don't have somebody to hold a camera I don't have like someone to film with and then I'm kind of just slowly realizing like yo I can just film like if I if I like if I like film things the right way with tripods and I use like the GoPro POV and like now it's so amazing what you can do. Like I'd always kind of been into like film and editing, you know, like that edit I was telling you guys about earlier was one that I had edited myself and I, I worked on, like like I put it together, you know, and I'd always been into that. Even my senior year of high school, I like worked a bunch on the senior video. I edited the majority of that. And I kind of like fell away from that for a while, you know, just not, I didn't have a computer and I didn't have a camera. Right. But with things getting so much easier, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but my YouTube is, completely shot on an iPhone, a GoPro, and my drone, the Mavic. It's like the three cameras I use and it's insane. It blows my mind away. Like I'm like, dude, it's crazy that I can like make something that looks this good with like these little devices, you know? Right. Like yeah. I used to have a VX and I just try to capture tapes and it was like, especially like I just made one when we were up snowboarding and like that video, if I had filmed that on the VX, like everything gets blown out because everything's white where it's like, you see, I'm like looking at this footage on like my GoPro on my phone. I'm like, dude, it's like, good footage like Mm -hmm. you know it's good quality stuff so I think I think more or less like I I kind of just I've always been into video I've always been into that whole thing and I kind of wanted to start doing more with it and working on like my own projects and working on video projects and it slowly kind of just evolved into a vlog over time you know Mm -hmm. because it's just I don't know it's just a it's a fun thing to do it's just like it's an easy thing to I don't want to say it's easy it's definitely a lot of work but it's fun. It's it's like a creative outlet for me at this point. It's something that like I can do besides ride my bike, and it, it like it almost helps me stay sane. If that makes any sense. Like when I was in college, I always had a bunch of projects. I always had stuff to work on, and then I went through this period where I had turned pro, and like your job's to like you know ride, and that's it, you know. And I almost didn't like to the point where I didn't have anything to do, and like I kind of need to be working on things, you know. And okay. you can only ride so many hours of the day before yeah. you know you come back into the house, and it's like. I don't want to sit around and watch TV. I want to be working on something. I want to be working towards something. I want to have something that like 
like a, just another creative out outlet essentially, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I feel like doing the vlog stuff, obviously they're not like these high production videos or anything, but it's, it's fun, you know? Right. And it's like, it's a super good way to interact with kids that like, you know, my, a lot of my inspiration for the vlogs comes from like the old rule fools, you know, like thinking about when I was a kid, how I got to know the pros that I wanted to know was Crandall running around on, you know, at FDR <laughs> at the skate park, giving everyone a bunch of shit, talking to them, you know, like, eh, like whatever. And that, but that's how I got to know people, you know, I like, that's how I got to know my pros. And that's like what made me become fans of certain pros was like listening to them talk and like seeing them hang out, you know, and like, I don't know, it's just cool. It's cool to, to do that. It's just a whole nother, whole nother world, you know. Um, now I definitely feel like you're, I'll be honest, I don't watch that many vlogs, but the little bit I do, I feel like yours have a different feel than a lot of the ones out there, but how do you feel when, um, honestly, they get up, they get like, like even like, you mentioned how some of your friends even kind of oh, yeah, like, express their disdain for yeah, vlogs. Yeah, yeah, like that's the thing, like a lot of my friends that like, like I know flat out like hate vlogs, they hate everything about it, they hate, you know what I mean, and they were like, but like the, 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 like the thing is, is the people that are my friends are my friends and they're not gonna care, you know what I mean? They're like, they, they probably do talk a bunch of shit about it and think it's whack, you know? But like, they're all my friends and to my face, it's whatever, like we're all cool, it's whatever. Like, you don't have to like every, everything that everyone does, you know, that's just, yeah. it's whatever, you know? That's, it's like, I, it goes back to it's like everything, just life in general, you're not, I mean, I think even in, like we can not to delve into the realm of politics, but there's just such a lack of understanding with people in general, you know, and it's just like if you don't understand something, you don't like it. It's just let it be almost, you know, yeah, and, I, yeah. and I find that it's a easier, lot of, yeah, you know? like a lot of my friends that like, like hate on vlogs, like, they don't care. Like they're whatever they see. I'm just doing whatever. They're not into it, but they don't care. They're not judging me on it. You know, they, they, they support me. They have my back, you know, like, so it's, it's cool. It's definitely weird, but I, I haven't really had any like any backlash from any of my friends personally. I mean, they'll, they'll give me like shit here and there, but for the most part, it's just like, you know, it's whatever. Um, your, one of your recent vlogs is actually uh, a trip to the barracks. Yeah, man, that was which crazy. Which you can watch that now, a little bit of it. Um, I mean, that's a pretty unique experience right there. Yeah, I don't know if they're too happy about a vlogger being up in the barracks, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, it was I wondered more like, about that too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, like, I put it together more or less like a BMX edit. I tried to make it like as, I didn't talk to the camera too much. I tried to make it as like, least like a vlog as possible, more like something people would just kind of want to watch. It's, riding the barracks, cruising the barracks. Like a lot of the stuff I had filmed POV just because like, just cruising around the barracks, might as well strap the camera on. And then like, as the day progressed and we were there for a while, I was like, yo, like, I guess I should start for, this was actually asking me his idea. I was gonna ask, I knew, I knew yeah. that was a rooftop idea right away. Yeah, so like, oh, let's film this. Rooftop. And then like, yo, yeah, like it was tight, rooftop gave me clips. And then like Ennis was filming a bunch of clips for the Fiend Instagram first and he gave me them that like, I, I was able to use at the end. I kind of try to like orchestrate, like if you watch the video, I like, try to lead into Tony's section of filming. Like there's there's one part where it's like, you know, like there's all these clips that are kind of filmed, you can tell on like a phone and, and a GoPro. And then like, I show a clip of Tony, I show a clip of Garrett, I show a clip of him about the film Reiki's and then it cuts into all Tony's film footage, which right. is obviously a lot better than anything I'm filming. But um, yeah, it's cool. Like, yeah, this is all like, this is all Tony stuff. Did you, uh, cause in this you say you can't really talk much about like how'd you guys end up there Is well that... yeah I, I guess i can talk I, mean, about I know a little it. bit about i don't know, I don't it, know but... like it's um the bear like i guess the barracks is starting to do more more things with other like other type of extreme sports i think they're doing stuff with like bmx surfing motocross and just they're doing media pieces you know and right now they're doing like a media piece on garrett and escamilla mm -hmm. um and it has to do with street riding and their influence on street riding which obviously everyone knows is pretty heavy um but yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to. Like I said, I don't want to say too much about it. But right. uh, they're they're working on it. You know, we were there. We we all kind of were just answering questions. Inter kind of similar. You know, like a little little interview on kind of. You know, like they asked us questions about Garrett. You know, and there's a bunch of other people there. And just, I'm excited to see how it turns out. Really, yeah. I am. I know. I know Tony's gonna give a bunch of like actual riding footage of Garrett, and I'm sure this it's it's gonna. I think it's gonna really be one of those things that's cool to watch because it's like two different people that had really big influences in the same field for like, but like on completely, in completely different eras, you different know what I mean? It's just, yeah. I think it's really gonna turn out cool. Like they, from what I got, like I don't even really know that much, you know, I would just ask some questions and I'm kind of seeing, but from what I like, the way I can kind of see, I kind of saw Escamilla's brain working. He was at, like, I kind of think like, I think like he has a really good vision for it and I think it's gonna turn out super dope. It's definitely gonna be one that you guys are gonna wanna watch for sure. And, uh 
what was it like riding there? I mean, were there were there any skaters or pro skaters there chilling, or was it like a I weird mean, vibe? Or it was like, I'm like pretty like naive when it comes to like skaters' names, but I think there was a few that were like there was some really good skaters. Like, there was a few. I think there was one dude that was like he didn't look like a pro skater. He had like some gold chains on. <laughs> yeah, <he's like>, oh, <laughs> whatever, man. I don't know. He looked he's just skating his swag on his board, but I don't know. We didn't really get like like a lot of the skaters were actually pretty cool there. There wasn't really anyone that was like too like really even cared that we were when we were there you know it wasn't really too too tight or like too hectic you know for the most part it was pretty chill we just rode there wasn't like a lot of people there when we were riding and it was like there wasn't that many of us riding we're all respectful knowledgeable pros we're right snaking anyone and we're not right. messing anything up but like as far as riding in there like the actual park to ride so much fun like one of the funnest oh. things that way the way it flows and goes together like, it doesn't even look that complex but just when you ride it so much makes it just makes so much sense and like so much of the stuff is perfect to learn on like there's you know what i mean this it one seems kind here, of forgiving yeah real forgiving and like there's like a, things are adjustable you can like lower the height and you can move uh. stuff and it's just like it's kind of like a dream park almost you know but it seemed kind of spread out too it seems yeah. like it was very tight yeah it's it's real loose it's, it's real spread eye, out which is which is and no that it's, a, it's big it's big and i think that helps too with like you know like people not really get, like i think the smaller parks is when you have a lot of problems with people being on top of each other it mm -hmm. seems like that's the kind of park where you can session an area and stay completely away or you can flow the entire park like I it love really like that. it really like really can you can ride this little section or you can make the most and flow like it, it really is put together well i mean obviously it's one of the most famous skate facilities you know right. they're gonna do it right but yeah there's so many like little things the longer i'm there the more you notice like oh there's coping on here or there's you know they're just really like random like were there any rules going into it like you can't grind this ledge or anything like that um, anything anywhere no, because no, we, we all have plastic pegs and plastic right. guards so asking me like he's like yeah you guys are all running plastic stuff you know he's like, he's like just use common sense you know like <laughs> Like don't, say, he's like he's like there's, yeah there's there's a jersey barrier like please don't try to do disasters you know like right. with a metal guard like stuff like that like obviously you know you know you don't want to mess any of the stuff up but with bikes nowadays i mean they're so like they're so forgiving with spots i feel like they're almost more forgiving than skateboards with spots when it comes down to it like you have plastic pegs plastic hub guard plastic pedals plastic bar ends rubber tires like realistically like the amount of like the damage that you can do now versus like five ten years ago is so minimal yeah that it's it's like you're it's, it's meant for it now you know it's meant to preserve spots and it's meant to slide better on spots and work better with spots so it's it's like uh yeah i don't nobody really missed anything i think anymore. riders have gotten smoother over the years too even new newbies are just getting yeah, smoother yeah. quicker no one's like landing down on grinds anymore yeah it's yeah like, Going forward I think like I think the way kids learn how to ride now and that's like you see this whole like the, the way newer kids are learning how to ride it's just it's so different than like I mean we saw earlier the footage like trail like like a lot of when that fur when street was first being born it was such like the people like what people weren't learning how to ride street like that's not how they grew up learning how to ride you know right. they, they right. grew up riding trails and big jumps so like I think a lot of times when you watch old street videos most people had like a do or die mentality when it came to things, you know, mm -hmm. and you're kind of just full force getting it where now it's so much more like there's a million and one skate plazas everywhere. Every town you go to, there's something where like, that's what kids are learning how to ride. Now they're learning how to ride a grind ledge and they're learning how to fall and like run away from their bike and get away versus, you know, like somebody who's just all in going for it, metal yeah. pegs, messing stuff up. Kind of like the pioneering yeah. faces where they don't really know what's going to happen. So yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's evolved. Like yeah. That. Yeah. It's, it's it's evolved now. It's a lot more controlled now. I think people are a lot more controlled than their bikes. I guess I should say. You know? So we got we have two pairs of bars, yeah, two pairs of bars, a stem, and some stickers. So maybe I don't know. I think maybe what we think of like three questions, and then I think typically like whoever gets. All the all three questions right first in their response we'll get like bars and the stem and maybe a sticker pack and then the next runner up gets the other bars and stickers. Does yeah, that, sound? that sounds good. Yeah, that sounds so I have to come up with questions. Um yeah, it could be whatever about me. Oh my god. Yeah. So first first one to it's get like how hard do you make them? That's up to you. Uh, you we we, we did the first the first one we did with, with Curly and he had like 
he had one question that took like major homework. <laughs> so God, I don't even remember. It was I watched like, his, I, I did watch his thing. I just one of his edits. So he's long. like, which is what what clip am I riding my oldest bike in this edit or whatever it was? And it was like he had to watch the edit, and figure out which bike was the uh, oldest. Yeah. Like, um. But yeah, I mean, it could even be something that we we talked about during this video. I mean, they can just come back, you know, and replay and watch it. But yeah, so run first one to get all three right gets bars, stem, sticker pack. Runner up gets other bars and stickers. All right, look man. how big that's look how big a sticker oh, is. Jesus, that's this like, thing is that's, huge. That, that's the good one for like the car street company like making that. a giant ramp sticker. It's awesome. It's got it's for the cars. <laughs> And they got the one sticker in here. I don't want to open it up, but the, the big black one, that's the one I always ride on my, usually on my bikes. All right. Um, yeah, man, three questions on the fly. All right, let's start, let's start with something on the, let's start with something on the, in the barracks video. I asked a question about that, and then we'll go watch that. Um, hmm. What do you think? Ooh. Ooh. What does Reiki's do? I'll give Reiki some love because he's the yeah. new dude on Fiend. What does Reiki's do in the barracks edit? What trick? What's the line he does? That's the first question. So I, should I do like three questions? Yeah, so that's the first that's question. That's the first question. What does Reiki's do? It's a line, right? It's a line. So all, all the tricks in a yeah, line. Yeah, in a line. What does he do? It's just, it's, it's pretty... Wouldn't, I wouldn't take too long to type out, I wouldn't think. Um, another question. Um, and... Oh man, I'm trying to think of what like I just I'm trying to think of like how do I even ask like what do I even there's so many questions about myself. <laughs> how do you create questions about yourself? That's a hard one. I guess we'll just keep them keep them on the channel. Um, what else? What was the first my my first BMX YouTube video? That's the first BMX YouTube video that's on my channel. What is it? That's the second question. What's Deadline. the na name and artist of my song in Deadline? There we go. There you go. All right. First one to get all those questions right gets bars, stem, stickers, runner-up, bars, and the leftover stickers. Free stuff, dude. Free stuff. All you got to do is comment. Free parts. Um, and then, uh, well, yeah, these. so besides I that... I don't even know what size these bars are. I think these are the nines or the nine and a quarters or nine and a half. Do you, um, is there anything else that you have coming up products wise or? Um, the, Animal's you know? doing a trip to, we're doing like an LA house, I think. It's coming up in like the next two weeks. We're gonna be there for a little bit. I think like, like a little 10 day or we're kind of just be, I think we're gonna do like a trip video from it. So okay. a little project. Um, besides that, just working on my fiend part and then Doing the YouTube thing, riding, trying to ride, trying to maintain. Any other, healthy. any other like signature parts in the works you talk about yet? Working or? on my, working on my V2 frame with Fiend right now. I'm um, pretty excited about that. Should be getting a sample within like the next couple weeks. Um, new frames, new colors just came out of my new frames. Is a, uh, I did a gunmetal gray for my brother because he's got a gunmetal gray car, and I just, I always thought it'd be cool. Build a, build That's a my favorite color car. Yeah, that's sick. Figure that with like all black parts look pretty cool, and then I have the green, which I'm super hyped about. If you guys, I'm sure you've seen it in my videos, it's super, super cool. But um, are you yeah. changing up anything geometry wise or features? Geometry, yeah, I'm changing. I don't want to. I don't want to speak too soon. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. You're gonna have to wait and see. But I'm changing up some geometry on the on the on the V2. Um, I'm not sure how it's gonna feel yet, so I don't want to go. I don't know. It's something okay. that's like, like I think it's gonna. And this is kind of how my first frame. I think I think it's gonna feel really, really good. Something is a little like a little different that I'm gonna be doing to this frame. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys. You gotta stay tuned. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You'll see. You'll see me talk about it on there. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's yeah. About it. yeah. I think that's probably about it. Yeah. That's, All right. It's a wrap. It's well, a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure being here, Z. Hey guys, this is Colin, just here to remind you to subscribe to Ride BMX's YouTube to get all the fresh videos, all the fresh content, and uh, yeah, see you guys later.